are live and inside Harris Terry Stadium on the campus of Blunt High School as the Leopards look to defend their den and send Daphne's Trojan horse back across the Bay in defeat. But Daphne has other plans in mind. A win tonight would maintain their second seed in the region. Week 9 action is headed your way with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey LeBounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. And, Corey, you could almost say we have a playoff-like atmosphere tonight here at Blunt. We most definitely do, Al. When you look at this game tonight, it's going to determine playoff seating. And a lot of coaches want to make money at home versus spending money going on the road for playoff implications. But there's going to be a lot of purple on the field tonight for sure, and two great teams are going to get after each other. Absolutely. Right now, Daphne's sitting solid in second place in 6A Region 1, and un uh, surprisingly, Blunt in fourth place right now, Corey. Normally, we see them in first or second place in the region. There are a lot of log jams going on, not only in 6A Region, but 7A, 5A, and 4A as well. That's why you have 10 weeks of football and a lot of football left to be played, because sometimes we're not going to figure out who's going to win the region, yeah, who's going to stay home, tennis, who's going to travel, right. until everything is completed in the regular the season. Half. A lot of big games going on tonight. Corey just talked about a region 6A, 7A, and 5A. We'll talk about that later on. Corey, let's get to your checklist. Blunt is the home team. What do they need to do tonight to get this victory? When you look at Blunt, they definitely have to stop the Trojan horses from running. And Blunt is known for their dynamic defense, but on offense, you look at the Daphne Trojans, they have a couple of big backs. Mike Franklin and Jay Pogue are going to get it done. Those are the Trojan horses that they're going to have to try to stop. You also have to not beat themselves with that old dirty yellow rag on the field. We'll be hearing that a lot from the PA announcer, and we'll talk about that story a little later on. And they must match the intensity of the Daphne Trojans tonight, Al. Now across the field, Daphne is the visiting team. What do you have on line for them tonight in your checklist, Corey? They have to be consistent in all three phases of the game for all four quarters. That's going to be very important. Last week, they snuck away with the last second win against Gulf Shores, and the two losses that they've had have been in late game action. So special teams is going to be a factor tonight for the Trojans as well. They must also control the clock with the balance offensively. You want to see them be able to run the football, also be able to throw the football, and they must limit the Leopards' field position tonight. Flipping the field is going to be essential for both of these teams kicking-wise. It will be. It's senior night for Blunt tonight. Before the game, they introduced all the seniors and all the different sports and activities. And uh, it's an electrified atmosphere tonight. A lot of folks made the trip over the bay from Daphne to check out this big game. And we even had some fireworks already starting off, Corey. And that's the way you start off senior night, with a boom. And we'll see what type of offensive or defensive explosions, or maybe even in the third aspect of the game, special teams-wise, we have tonight at Harris Terry Stadium. Blunt head coach Lev Colley, he's in his, Lev Holly, I'm sorry, in his third season at Blunt. His record is 25 and eight. He's got a 781 winning percentage. He's three and two in the playoffs. And across the field, Daphne head coach Kenny King entering his second season at Daphne. His record is 14 and five. Corey had a, has a 737 winning percentage, one and one in the playoffs. He was a rookie coach last year, had a great first year over there at Daphne for Kenny King. You look at Kenny King getting off to the slow start a year ago and turning off and running nine wins in a row and right. really getting into gear for the Trojans. We had them the first game of the season against the Davidson Warriors, right. a very low scoring contest. But since then, both of these teams have really improved offensively. And it's going to be interesting, the dynamics that are brought tonight, the chess match between these two great head coaches. Yeah, that was an interesting game, first game. Matter of fact, the score, I believe, was three to nothing. Daphne over Davidson. And so uh, has opened up the season there with a very low-scoring match. But that's something that Daphne's used to. They come in tonight only giving up, Corey, 12 points a game. Very stingy defense for the Daphne Trojans. And that defense is going to be led tonight by defensive coordinators Larry Reynolds and Kenny King. We know Kenny King played his high school football at Daphne, went on to the University of Alabama, and then on to the NFL. So defense is definitely Coach King's forte. They had eight returning starters to begin this season, and like you mentioned, being very stingy, only giving up 12 points. Oh, yeah, beautiful night for football tonight. 73 degrees, a little part of the cloudy, 73% humidity. Definitely humid out here. No chance of rain. We got some wind. 
winds come out of the east at five miles per hour. Hopefully those will pick up. Not as humid as it was last week. We went down in the bayou for Bryant and Baker. On to kick for Daphne, Diego Guardo. He'll be handling the kickoff, and he punches it down. Receiving it, Trey John Pugh for the Leopards, and he is up to about the 31 yard line. And we'll get our first look at this explosive, powerful, blunt offense averaging 31.4 points a game coming into tonight's contest. Danielle Taylor on the stop on special teams. He's a linebacker at six foot, 208 pounds. And again, with this great field position getting started, it's going to be interesting to see whether Blunt comes out throwing or passing the football. First look at them led by senior quarterback Jacoby Davis. He's already thrown for over 1,600 yards this season, picking up right where Kadarius Toney left off. He's playing down there at the University of Florida. So Jacoby Davis off having a great senior year so far for Blunt. So first and 10 ball at their own 31-yard line, and we're going to take a look at this Blunt offense. Collins was the third in motion, comes to the near side. Davis airs it out, incomplete to Trajan Pugh, taking Blunt to second down. Let's take a look at that offense. We just talked about Jacoby, Jacoby Davis. Trajan Pugh, he's rushed for 1,000 yards this season. Got to talk about the wide receivers. Jones, Cash Woods the third, and Paul Malden. That crew, the shortest one is 5'8". And across the front, Corey, listen to this. 295, 305, 300, 285, 315. The Blunt Leopards averaging 300 pounds across that offensive line. See if they can get any push as they go to this spread offense with only one back. Pugh gets north and south. He's a load to carry. Picks up maybe two or three. Yeah, a lot of big guys to run behind here on the blunt offensive line. Let's flip over to the defensive side. They've been playing a 4-3 defense. You talked about the co-defensive coordinators there. Big names Maurice McBride, also Ty Reynolds, and Jawan Miles, leaders on the defense for Daphne. They're, they're averaging 241 pounds across that front four, and they will have their work cut out for them tonight going up against Blunt. It's third down and about six as the Leopards trying to pick up their first first down. Ball thrown out to Jamarcus Paul Malden, and him, he's wrapped up immediately. Great he's open field tackle by Jawan Miles, the cornerback 5'8", 145 junior, 145 pound junior, came up with the textbook style open field tackle. He's gonna make Blunt put it on their foot early out. Back to punt for Blunt, Kyle Cass will be handling those duties. Setting up to take that return, it looks like it may be Christian Williams for Daphne. So Blunt with a quick three and out there. I'm sure Coach Lev Holly didn't have that in plan that deep for, the Trojans. for tonight. Number four. Nice Chris punt by Cass there. Heading out of bounds. Bob, we've got a break here. Let's take a look at the impact players for the Blunt Leopards, Corey. And when you talk about the Blunt Leopards, you have to talk about Collins Woods III. He's the dynamic wide receiver, second in his class academically, has right. already committed to the University of Louisiana Lafayette, will be going there in January. And also the running back, senior running back, Trey John Pugh, has accumulated over 1,000 yards rushing so far on the season. Yeah, great dynamic runner. That's something else to have a – quarterback throwing over 1,600 and a running back over 1,000. Chance Newman, quarterback for Daphne, saw him the first week of the season against Davidson in that game. Gets that ball out complete to Jaquan Miles. Picks up a couple there, taking Daphne to second down. Jaquan Miles, 5'10", 139-pound sophomore with the reception, just taking what the blunt defense gave him. Gave him that soft cushion on the far sidelines. A quick throw is Trying to get them established with the rhythm offensively. About second and four here for the Trojans. Side to hand it off. Big run there for Daphne. Jay Pogue looks like he picks up that first down, Corey. And that's huge, I mean, because that's one of the things the Blunt had to do was stop the Trojan horses. And being able to pick up that first down is big time for Daphne's confidence early. That is the first down, so first and 10. As Daphne on the move, approaching the midfield stripe here. Okay. 
Newman trying to connect with his receiver. Dumps it out to Jay Pogue. He picks up maybe four or five. Let's take a look at the Trojan offense. We've talked about Chance Newman, Chance Newman, senior quarterback, and Jay Pogue getting that start tonight. Also, Mike Franklin, he typically gets that rock across the front for Daphne, averaging about 230 pounds. They don't throw it very often. They're more of a run-heavy team, so be on the lookout for them to run the ball, ground and pound, eat up the clock against the Leopards tonight. Second and about four. Newman does get that one out, and he does hook up with his receiver, Jaquan Miles, for a nice game. Surprisingly, Daphne throwing the ball a bit more tonight. Let's flip it over to the defense side, take a look at the Leopards on defense, averaging 248 against the front. They play a 4-3 as well. Cortland Martin and Chad Dumas right there in the minute. Zadie and Green doing his thing. That's the Daphne Trojans defense, so that's not blunt. We have to get them back up, back down to the field. It's first down as Daphne approaches the red zone, Corey. We have a stoppage of play penalty marker down on the field. So let's get the blunt defense up while we have a break right here and take a look at them. A lot of seniors on this defense. Talked about Kyle Cass. He does kicking and punting. Substitution on the reference. But looks like we have a substitution penalty against Blunt. So there it is. Kyle Cass will call his name a lot tonight, even on offense, Corey. He does some double dipping for the Leopards. Lindsey Johnson supporting Cass in the linebacking core there across the front, averaging 248. They play a 4-3 as well. And be on the lookout for Tayshawn Petway, strong safety. Back there for the Leopards. Cortland Martin, the outstanding defensive end for the Blunt Leopards, comes in with 68 tackles and 10 sacks on the season. Going to need to get a good push as the Trojans have already established themselves in the Leopard red zone area. So that penalty against Blunt, mental mistakes early, first and five inside the red zone, and Pogue up the middle, he goes. And he's probably going to get those chains moving again, close to another first down for Daphne. Tony Overstreet Jr., the middle linebacker, 6'225 pounds, senior on the stop for the Blunt Leopards, but it does bring up second down and one yard to go for the Trojans. Good spot there, Corey. Not enough to get the first down, only needed five yards, but the way Daphne's going with it now, they probably will be close to picking this up. And at fullback, Hunter Monty. Sorry, at halfback slot right there. There's Pope, little juke step and gets the first down, crossing the five yard line. Let's take a look at the impact players for Daphne tonight. And it has to start with the quarterback, Chance Newman. 6'2", 200 pounds, senior, really running the show for the Trojans, as well as Mike Franklin, number one, the dynamic running back for the Trojans. Haven't seen Franklin yet. We wonder if something's maybe going on with him. Get a look. And around the edge into the end zone. Touchdown for Daphne. Cameron Reed with the end around there, Corey. He picks it up on that jet sweep for a touchdown. Oh, Trent Battle, I'm sorry. I thought it was Cameron Reed. Trent Battle with the touchdown there. And that was just a great end around call by the Trojans. When the Daphne Trojans are able to establish themselves early on the offensive line and on that drive like they just did, Blunt's going to have to go and make the adjustments. Here, Wado on for the extra point. Daphne on the board here at the 815 mark. Diego for the PAT. It's up. Kick is up. And it is good. So Daphne out to an early lead. 7-0 at the 8:15 mark. We'll be back with more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. In Mobile County Public Schools, we are redefining ready. We are graduating college ready, career ready, and life ready. We are more than just a test score. We are earning college credit while in high school. We are working internships to get real world experience. We are welders. We are certified nursing assistants. We are Redefining Ready. College and career ready isn't just a buzzword in Mobile County. Our students earned more than 10,000 nationally recognized career credentials last year, giving them an advantage when moving into the workplace. It starts 
with us. Welcome back to action. Daphne on top early here, Corey, 7-0 at the 8-15 mark. Just like we talked about on my checklist early, the second thing that I said that the Trojans needed to do was control the clock with balance offensively. You saw a steady run game as well as passing game, a lot of balance by the Trojans on that opening drive. Back to receive for Blunt, Trey John Pugh and Jamarcus Poe Malden. Previous kickoff didn't go to either of them, and that one sails deep, just did to the end zone, so that'll be an automatic touchback. Blunt will get the ball at the 20-yard line. Corey, you did talk about a nice balanced attack from Daphne, a little run, a little passing, mixing it up. One penalty there against the Lepers did give them five yards, but they, they moved pretty steadily down the field. Daphne offense led by offensive coordinators, co-coordinators, James Moore and Joseph Horn, both in their first year for Coach King, really dialed it up, averaging 20.57 points a game, and they scored with these on that opening drive. Second time looking at the Lepers tonight. First and 10 at the 20. Here come Norwood and the Lepers. In motion goes Poe Malden. Davis hands it off to Pew, trying to pick his way and just manhandle right there at the line of scrimmage. And a penalty marker does come in, Corey. And we'll see that old dirty rag on the field. And we'll hear the commentator, the PA announcer all night long, Mr. Gamble, talk about one of his favorite and traditional phrases, that old dirty yellow rag. Oh, yeah, we will, Corey. They're going to wave that flag off. Wow. So sometimes the laundry is clean, and they want to keep it that way in that situation, Al. There's a look at our officials for tonight. Joey Pilgrim, referee, so they do wave it off. So it's second down no gain on for the Blunt. No they gain, so we'll three. call it second and ten. Here come Norwood and the Trips at the bottom of the screen here. Blunt does throw it a lot, and there they go, trying to connect with Jamarcus Poe Malden and had Collins Wood on the deep route, and the ball falls incomplete. And that's one of those situations to where Blunt, on their first offensive possession, went three downs and out. They can ill afford to go three and out here on their second possession. They really need to maintain and establish some type of offensive momentum so the Trojans don't quickly get back out on the field offensively. You know, sure do. You're right about that. Third down. I'm sorry, second down for Blunt here. Second and ten. Did we have a penalty marker there? Ineligible receiver downfield by the offense. That penalty's declined. It'll be third down. Thought it was third down, Corey, and I didn't see the penalty mark on the field there. I'm kind of just snuck away from us. I was looking at the receiver on the play who right. did not come up with the football, and like you said, one of the line judges was able to throw that laundry onto the field, and we didn't pick it up, but nonetheless, third and ten for the Leopards. So Daphne declines it. They don't want to give Blunt second and 15. Rather, third and 10. Davis weaving his way out of the backfield. Comes to the near side trying to pick up a couple, maybe three or four. They're generous. They're giving him about six yards on the carry. But that's not enough to get fourth down. I mean, not enough to get a first down. Going to be pushed out of bounds by Andrew Gilbert, the defensive end. 6'3", 190-pound junior. Not enough for that first down like you mentioned, Al. Take a look at some of the scores from last week's action with Mobile County Public Schools. Williamson got that victory over Faith. Of course, tight one up there in Citronelle. St. Paul's over them. Jackson losing to Viger. Surprised a lot of folks. They shut them out. Blunt all over the floor. McGill all over MGM. You see the rest of them there. We were down. And Bryant as Baker lost. And that Murphy double overtime. Murphy over Theodore. Kyle Cass with the punt. Nice punt. Great hand time. Hang time, and the Daphne Trojans run away from it, but Christian Williams decides to go after. That's a live ball, Corey LeBounty, and that looks like Blunt has recovered. And that's a big-time special teams play by the Leopards, recovered by Kelsey Hill being Johnny on the spot. And you look at that situation for the Daphne Trojan. Christian Williams probably should not have fielded that ball and went ahead and let it bounce. One of those special team steals right. that you get, you weren't able to move the sticks with the ball in your hands. Now you have an opportunity to do so. Let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. 
Hey guys, I wanted to kind of give you a little clue into what the mindset of this team is tonight. When I talked to both of the coaches before the games, they said that these are the three things that they need to do. They need to have discipline, they need to play physical, and they need to execute. And that's exactly what both coaches said. So these teams seem to have the same mindset tonight. So we will see how this game turns out. Thank you, Kim. You're right about that. A lot up for grabs tonight. P with the carry, two or three yards there. Situation like that, minimal stake by the young man, Corey, could possibly cost them a score. Blunt in a great position right here in Trojan territory and trying to get on the board to notch this thing back up at seven. Flip the field, but so far offensively, Blunt has no yards gained because it was third and ten. They punted the ball. Now we're at second ten and still have not gained many yards offensively. Little fake draw. Jacoby Davis airs it out. He has... Cole Malden, but he overthrows him. I like the play call. They I decided do. to go with a little play action and take their shot down the field. The ball thrown a little bit too far for the Blunt Leopard. When you take a look at the He's replay, you see Jones drop back and tries to throw it on the money. Just comes up a little bit too far and looking for some help. <laughs> Paul Malden wasn't going to get much because there was no pass interference there. No, he was not. You can see the arm of Jacoby Davis there. Got a chance to step into that pass and let it sail, but just a little too far, Corey. So third down, surprisingly, back up again for the Blunt Leopards. Pole Malden in motion there with trips at the bottom. We talked about it earlier. Blunt throws it a lot. A little screen right there for Pole Malden, trying to pick up some yardage. Maybe gets two or three as that stingy Daphne defense shuts him down again. Tried to go with a short tunnel screen, and Maurice McBride, the defensive tackle, 6'2", 250-pound senior, went ahead and did a good job of wrapping up the offensive wide receiver in that situation from that bubble screen. Decision time here for Coach Lev Holly. Ball on the 30-yard line of Daphne. No need to punt, no need to kick it. And Blunt will be going for it. No, not surprised by this at all. Just want to spread this Trojan defense out wide and hopefully get them backpedaling and hit the receiver in route. Davis got time, throws it across the middle. Tried to connect with his receiver, couldn't get him to Kyle Cass there, could not. So ball over on downs to Daphne. So Daphne's defense holds Corey and doesn't let Blunt advance much further than uh, where they picked up the great opportunity from the botch punt there. You look at the replay, and Jacoby has plenty of time, dances around, tries to step up, and it sails on him a little bit too high, comes up incomplete. Good job of the Trojan bending and not breaking mm -hmm. with Blunt establishing good field position. But let's see how Daphne now opens up offensively with success they had on their first drive. Chance Newman back on the field with the Daphne the offense, incomplete, the trying to get it out to his receiver for Daphne, number 85, comes up incomplete, trying to connect with Dante Lee, it's tight in there. Tight end, 5'7", 140 pound junior, the pass was more so thrown at his feet, didn't give the tight end a real opportunity to catch the football. It's second and 10, Trojans. Ball still at the 30 yard line of Daphne. A little quick out there trying to connect with Poe. And does get it over. I'm sorry, not to Poe, to Jared Lee. Trent Battle, I'm sorry. Trent Battle on tight end on the catch there. Picks up a couple yards, takes Daphne to third down. Good job of the push as we take a look at the replay. Chance Newman didn't have an opportunity to step into that throw. Good push by the front four of the defensive line for the Leopards. Caught Battle on a little quick hot route there. Daphne looking over to the sideline to pick up the call from the offensive coordinator. Play clock under 10. They need to get it going if they want to get this one off, Corey. We're at five seconds here. And we do have stoppage. It appears as if Daphne does call the timeout. Don't want to pick up the penalty right there. Third and about five, maybe about six yards to go. Not a good opportunity time to good opportune time to take a penalty. We know Blunt had a costly penalty, pushed him back five yards when they had the ball earlier. And that allowed Daphne to get an extra five to get into the end zone a little closer when they were in the, in the red zone there. Yeah, the Daphne Trojans did an outstanding job on their opening drive of mixing it up offensively, had some pass plays, some run plays. They were able to establish themselves more so easily than I thought they were going to be able to right. do. This second drive is somewhat stalled, going to bring up third down, and like you said, mentioned a long five and a half to six yards. 
you would think that they would probably pass the ball in this situation because I don't think this blunt defense is going to give up six yards rushing the football, especially the type of push they got on that last play with Chance Newman. All right, so Coach Kenny King calls timeout, saves those five yards and regroups and gets things together here. We'll call it third and six here for the Trojans. Newman with a little quick dump screen, trying to get it to battle, incomplete. Little, almost a half version of the Tim Tebow jump pass there. And that's what happens when you start feeling the push of that defensive line, your timing gets a little bit awkward and off. Right. And that situation come up a little bit short. Blunt was able to hold. Now let's see if they can get anything together offensively. Some of the scores coming in from last night and also action taking place tonight there. Fairhope all over Murphy last night. Theodore gets the big win. It was homecoming down to Theodore as they defeated Bryant. And LaFleur came back to defeat Robertsdale. Corey, I was checking out some of the scores earlier, and Robertsdale was up 27-13. And LaFleur comes back and gets that victory. And there's going to be an old dirty rag on the play. I do believe it's going to be a maybe a roughing the kicker in that situation. I'll let the white hat kind of describe to us exactly what right. happened. Is both of us were looking at the return. You could hear the crowds oohs and ahs, right. and you knew something had gone on off of the ball. Wait for Coach. I'm sorry, referee Joey Pilgrim to give us the call here. Take a look at the replay. Maybe we can see it. But Eduardo gets the punt off and does run into the leg of the kicker. Running into the kicker by the defense. Five yard penalty will not be a first down. So not enough to get the first down. They it'll bring up about fourth game. down in inches now for the Trojans. And yep. where you are located on the field, I wouldn't take a chance. I would want to flip the field if right. you're the Trojans and kind of pin the Blunt Leopards deeper in their own territory, even though you only have the snout of the pigskin to go. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't get any closer than being a first down. Well, also look at it right here. Coach Kenny King may try to play the chess match and get Blunt to jump off since the penalty was only five yards. If you get a delay a game, you only go back five yards. I think he's going to ask for a measurement. That's why he's come out to the numbers asking the officials to kind of look at it. He's trying it. to figure it out. He's still on the numbers yeah. trying to say, hey, can we at least get a measurement this time? Doesn't look like that's going to work unless he calls a timeout because they have put the ball into play. And you can see Coach Kenny King pleading over there with referee Pilgrim, and they're about to discuss it. And Pilgrim never picked his flag up, Corey. It's still down in the middle of the field down there. And that's what Kenny King is trying to – it's like you said, it's a chess oh, match. Yeah. You're, you're talking to the official. You're letting them know, hey, look, I want you to go pick up your flag. But at the same time, while I'm telling you that, I'm going to tell you also that please, let's get a measurement. Let's look at exactly how close this football is to being a first down. So it appears as if the sticks will now come out to measure and Pilgrim picks up his flag and we will now have fourth and very close score. What do you call it? The snout of the snout of the pigskin there. It is definitely that. I mean, I, I still, I would punt in this situation because field position is going to be very valuable in this contest. We'll see if Daphne is going to go with the hard count here. Are they going to snap it? They do. Up oh, and a surprise. Look at there. Jay Pogue picks it up off the ground. He's trying to escape. Wow, disaster for the Trojans. Corey, I'm thinking maybe the hard snap was on, but the communication between quarterback and center didn't take place because he snapped it, and Newman wasn't even ready for it. That's a situation wow. where you've seen another special team's blunder by the Daphne Trojans to tonight. Right. Sooner or later, Blunt's going to be able to capitalize have the field now flipped in their favor. That's why I would prefer that the Trojans go ahead and punt the football so you do go ahead and make this offense that has not picked up a lot of yards so far earn it the old-fashioned way. 428 remaining here in the first quarter. And this is a team you don't want to put in a position like this. A couple weeks ago, folks thought they were down and they almost came back and beat Spanish for it. So the Leopards can definitely turn it on when they need to. down at the 30. Little quick lateral out there to Poe Malden. He doesn't pick up any. He's brought back for a loss, three or four on the loss there. And I like to pursue by the Trojans. And in that situation, you've seen Blunt just go safe passes when they have the football. Their offensive coordinator on the season, Lonzo Johnson, in his third year calling the shots, they're coming in averaging 31.3 points per game. So as soon as they start get clicking offensively, watch out. 
Davis with a quick out across the middle and hooking up with LeBaron Jones. He picks up a couple, gets them back in the positive range on the sticks there, maybe be about third and about three, Gore. Most productive play offensively of the night of the first quarter so far by the Leopards, but they have a plethora of wide receivers that they can go to. LeBaron Jones, Collinswood the third, Poe Malden, all at the disposal of the quarterback, Jacoby Davis. Let's check that. We'll give it third and two here for the Leopards. Ball right there at about the 20-yard line, trying to penetrate the red zone and get into the end zone for Blunt. Davis waits, and he does get out to Kyle Cass. Gets the first down into the red zone, into the, the scoring zone here inside the 10, Corey. And when you look at that confidence pass, and he connected on an earlier pass, and now he's starting to get into a rhythm. You look at the replay, just a quick slant to the inside seam right. Kyle Case, Cass with the completion. Now the Leopards are starting to play the way that they're confident playing. At the top, Collins Woods, Poe Malden, and Cass. First and goal for the Leopards on the move, trying to hit pay dirt here in the Leopards' den. It's a keeper by Davis. He rumbles for about maybe a yard or two. Not much going there. Anytime you're in the shotgun and you try to gain positive yards, it's very tough. Andrew Gilbert coming up from his defensive end position, making the stop for the Trojans. Second and goal for Blunt. As we approach the two-minute mark remaining here in the first quarter, Daphne on top, 7-0. to zero. Pole Malden in motion. They hand it off to Trey John Pugh, and he's running, but the Trojans aren't letting go of his jersey cord. He gets hardly nowhere. Look at that. Daniel Taylor wow. with the wrap-up of the jersey. He's the weak side linebacker. As soon as he got his paws <laughs> on him, he was not going to let go, tugging and pulling, making sure that no extra yards, almost ripping the jersey old school style. Yeah. That would have been a, a disposable jersey, a rip-off jersey. No, th yeah, throw, uh, the th uh, throwback jersey. The throwback, yeah, the rip -off. You, you would have seen it the come on off. Wow, third and goal for Blunt. Trying to get this ball into the end zone. Daphne wants to deny them and keep the Blunt Leopard shut out. And Jacoby Davis is sacked. Corey brought down Big Maurice McBride with the sack. Wow, that's a momentum killer. That is a big stop because you were knocking on the door of scoring your first points. And as we look at the replay, it was just a great straight bull rush by McBride. Almost goes unblocked and was able to dump the quarterback down for the huge loss. Going to set up a situation now where we're looking at probably close to a 29-yard field goal. 29-yard field goal attempt. On to kick this ball, Kentrell Dorch for the Leopards. Gets it up. Does he hook it in? And no, it's – no, yes, he gets it in. He does. He clips it on in there. So, Blunt on the board, 7-3. to three. So, they do get some points out of that miscue on fourth down from Daphne. We talked about Blunt being able to capitalize off of the special team blunders by the Trojans, and they're able to do something and score in a phase that's very important for them and get three points on the board. Kentrell Dorch with the 29-yard field goal, so gets the Leopards on the board, and that's a huge, huge situation for them. We talk about it every week, Corey. Get the points the best way you can, sometimes going for it doesn't work out the best way. So Coach Lev Holly puts the young man out there on the field, and he comes away with the field goal to put Blunt on the board with three points. Let's take a live look in. McGill and Baker playing tonight. This game out in the Hornets nest. McGill already up 13 to nothing over Baker in the second quarter. So throughout tonight, we'll have a couple different live look-ins going on. A lot of big games throughout the area, Corey. Let's talk about it right quick. Spanish Fort traveling over to Sarah Land tonight. Also just around the corner at Pritchett Municipal Stadium, you have Viagra hosting St. Paul's, so almost like a triangle of great games here in the Pritchett area tonight. And what's amazing is you look at all of them are in different classifications. Right. So you pick your classification, whether you want it to be 4A on Old Shell Road, whether you want it to be 5A, 6A, or 7A, there's great matchups across the board. Deutsch with the little kick there. And it does go out of bounds, so that'll be, there's a penalty flag coming out. 
So I'm pretty sure Daphne will take the the yardage, the penalty where it is right here. Gives them great field position for it. That's one of the things that you want to do as a kicker, keep that ball in play. Yep. No matter what, even if it's a low squib kick, you never want to kick it out of bounds and giving the opposing team great field Illegal position. Illegal kick out of bounds by the kicking team. The ball went out at the 40. The receiving team will take the ball at the 40. Wow, great field position for Daphne there. Referee Joey Pilgrim giving us the call, the rest of the officials tonight. And they've been getting a paycheck early tonight, Corey. They've been doing some work here. A lot of laundry on the field early by both teams. Pass tip, and it is incomplete. Tried to get it out to Jaquan Miles. And ball apparently hit the ground. So judge all over there. We just talked about side judge all over there. The officials working hard tonight. On that first offensive drive, you saw the Daphne Trojans play with a lot of confidence. And that tip ball at the line of scrimmage means that the defense is doing a good job of timing Chance Newman's passes. And they're really getting after him after that first drive where he was effective. Hand off to Jay Pogue. Met at the line by a blunt leopard and brought down, wrapping him up on the tackle Here's there. The for the Good tackle by Tony Overstreet. He comes in again from his middle linebacker position. We, we've called his name he's a couple healed. of times tonight, the and he's doing a good job making sure he stays home and reads his keys. Third down for Daphne. Third and 10 here. We haven't seen Mike Franklin tonight, Corey. We had him as one of the impact players. Maybe he was a late scratch. We didn't get any word from Coach Kenny King or anything, but interesting, we haven't seen him tonight. Newman airing it out to Miles. Incomplete. Two leopards all around that. First three and out tonight for Daphne. Eric Williams going, trying to go very high to knock that ball away along with Kyle Cass. And you look at that throw, Newman had an opportunity just to let it rip and pass comes up incomplete and it's going to make the Trojans get ready to pump the football. But here's the thing, anytime Blunt is able to get a clean return on the punt, great things have happened for them this season. Oh, Guardo lays into that one. Look at it roll, Corey. Can Daphne down it? Great punt. Down to about the five-yard line. Wow. He put all his leg into that one. Flipping the field is very important, and that's what you ask your specialist to do. We'll be back with more action headed your way. That's the end of the first quarter. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Daphne on top, 7-3. Don't move. I started off at Fondy Elementary, then I went to Azalea Middle School, and then Davidson High School for my high school years. The Mobile County Public School System prepared me for my career by showing me why it was so important to give back. I am involved with the Big Brother Big Sister program, and I've been paired with a young boy that was in the third grade and is now finishing up the fourth grade, and it gives me an opportunity to give back and help mentor him. Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools, prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. We are back for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Second quarter action begins. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Coralie Bounty. Down on the sidelines, it's Kimberly Dunn. Daphne on top, 7-3. to three. Interesting first quarter we saw there, Core. Yeah, I mean, you saw the Daphne Trojans take their opening possession and march down the field and have balance offensively. And then it's kind of self-destructed special teams-wise for the Trojans at the end of the first quarter. By all those two mistakes Daphne gave up, 
Blunt is only capitalized with a field goal. So ball right here at the five-yard line. Davis in the end zone, needs to get rid of it. Tries to connect with Collins Woods, the third, and that is incomplete, a little too high for him. Well, we know that Collins Woods, the third, is definitely a vertical threat. And that's something that the Trojans are trying to prevent, but there's explosiveness from four or five of these wide receivers, as well as look for a quick draw play because we've seen Trajan Pugh, if he gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he has afterburners as well. Pew in motion, goes to the top. No one in the backfield for Davis. It's the quick out, tries to connect with Kyle Cass. Incomplete, Corey, something we've seen a lot tonight and familiar with, it's third and 10 for Blunt. That's a third and long situation, and you like to be in third and manageable. Maybe third and six, third and four is where the Blunt Leopards would probably like to be, mm -hmm. but right up against their own goal line, you want to be better safe than sorry. Don't want to get a holding call as the quarterback, Jacoby Davis, would roll out because that would equate to a safety. So let's see what the draw call is here. Davis has time, plenty of time, and airs it out, goes vertical, trying to connect with Collins Woods, the third. He gets his hands on it, but drops it incomplete. That'll take Blunt to fourth down. Fourth and 10, Christian Williams, the six foot, 175 pound junior in coverage. He had all day to throw that football. Did Jacoby Davis, just was not able to connect with his wide receiver the way he would have liked. And now the Trojans in this situation are gonna be in very, very good field position. Back to punt for Blunt, Kyle Cass, and back to receive for Daphne. Christian Williams just called his name. And looks as if he's going to be joined by Jaquan Miles. Nice punt by Cass there. Miles lets it go. And Blunt is going to down it at the 40-yard line. So great punt by Kyle Cass, Corey. Redeems himself from that previous punt early in the game. At least you're able to flip the field. And that's the most important attribute, being a specialist. When you're up against your own goal line, you have a chance to back the Trojans up and give this defense an opportunity only trailing seven to three of the Leopards. Very tight game here. It's also tight in 6A Region 1. We'll talk about that yeah, later on. We'll get some standings up, up, get some standings up and try to explain it to you what's at stake tonight for not only Blunt and Daphne, but also Spanish Fort, Sarah Land, LaFleur, Baldwin County as well. A lot, of, a lot at stake tonight. Round the edge goes battle. Little jet sweep picks up maybe two or three. Stays in bounds, keeps the clock running. We know Coach Kenny King likes ball control. Good mixture tonight. We talked about it in the first quarter, Corey. They're mixing it up pretty good with the run and the pass Daphne is. That's exactly right. Charles Nichols comes up and makes the stop. 6'4", 235-pound senior. Only three yards gained, even though it was positive yards by the Trojans. Second and seven for Daphne. Newman connects with battle across the middle and across the midfield stripe to pick up a first down. So Daphne continuing to mix it up on the move once again. And that's something that you saw in that first offensive drive to where the quick slants and the quick hits were there because Blunt was playing three or four yards off the line of scrimmage. So you're going to take what they give you in that situation. Trips to the near side here for the Trojans. Newman looking over to the sideline, picking up the signal, barking out the calls to his teammates. First and 10 ball on by the 48 yard line. Flags everywhere. We have some movement here before the play started. Joey Pilgrim tells his other buddy, I got it, I know what happened. <laughs> so false start against Daphne, that'll push him back five yards. And one of the things that Kenny King talked about in his second year is he loves the competition. He knows playing in this region is very tough. He came from the Arizona area, and he knew once prepping at Daphne High School how tough coming back home would be. First and 15 for the Trojans. Back on their side of the 50 now. Newman has all day and airs it out, trying to connect with battle, and he lays out four, gets his hands on it incomplete. 
that would have been a huge completion for Daphne if he could have held on to it. Well, you look at Chance Newman. I mean, he was 14 out of 20 versus Gulf Shores for 147 yards one week ago. And that dramatic last second win over the Gulf Shores Dolphins. We look at Chance Newman, have an opportunity, has a strong and protected pocket, steps up and just out of the outstretched, outstretched arms of battle. Battle 6'1", 180, freshman. Already making his mark tonight, picking up the first touchdown for the Trojans as we approach 10 minutes left in the first half. Second down and 15 for Daphne. And Coach Kenny King has called timeout, Corey. Timeout? Maybe he saw something he didn't like, so he's down to one timeout here remaining in the first half. Yeah, he didn't want to be in a situation, Al, to where he was going to put his team in the second down and 20 get a penalty, wants to make sure that the guys know exactly what play needs to be called on second down and 15 so they can gain back some of those valuable yards. Got a break here. Want to let you know to find out what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools from school news to weather alerts. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, mcpssthewire.com. You can also follow Superintendent Martha Peak on Twitter at superpeak. Let's take it down to the sidelines. I see Kimberly with the familiar face down there, Corey. Yes, we are here with Blunt's principal, Principal Woods. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. How about you? We're doing good. So can you tell me what sets your school apart from all these other schools? Well, first off, we're a signature academy for health care. We're one of the best at it in the state. Uh, you know, the health care program puts out a lot of kids. It's one of the biggest jobs openings in Mobile County. So we're pretty proud that we graduate kids as phlebotomists, CNAs, and, and other things in the healthcare field. Yeah. So, how are you feeling about how your team's playing so far tonight? Well, we started off a little slow. We got it at 7-3. I think we got it like we like it. We're going to get a score. We're going to take the lead. We're going to do some good things before this game's over. Yeah. So, can you tell me about some of the great quarterbacks that y'all have had come through your football program? Oh, man, you got to start with Damian Craig, four state championships. You got to talk about Kadarius Tony playing at Florida right now and countless others, man. We're just blessed to have a lot of good student athletes who do it the right way in the classroom and do it the right way on the field. Exactly, and how do you feel about not only having great athletes, but smart ones as well? Well, listen, we pride ourselves on making sure that our kids qualify and sign. I want to tell you that we had the largest signing class in the state of Alabama last year, over 13 kids. I think we're set to do about between eight and 10 this year, and we're gonna keep that going. Awesome. Thank you so much, Principal Woods. I look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Go Leopards. Thank you, Kimberly. Principal Jerome Woods there talking about the great things here at Blunt High School. Saw a little while ago, maybe it was earlier this year, last year, they had a Jerome Woods Day here in the city of Pritchard Court. They recognized him and honored him. Great principal, does a lot of great things here at Blunt. And that's important. Anybody who's just engulfed in their community, engulfed in the school with all the pride that's there, one of the things that I think a lot of people need to know is Mr. Wood's son plays wide receiver. Collins Woods the third is his son, right. has an opportunity to watch his son play each and every Friday night. And I know on game, game nights to where his son and Blunt is not playing, he's a, also an official. So he's a man of many hats and many talents, but does a great job for not only Pritchard, but this Blunt community. And I know the Alumni Association is happy to have somebody like him. That sure does. Fourth down right now. Blunt took a timeout. While we got a break, let's take a look at the 5A standings right now. We'll get those up for you. A lot of things going on. St. Paul's and Viagra playing tonight over in Pritchard. Citronelle, they're doing battle as well. But what's key about this game at Pritchard tonight, Citronelle beat Viger. St. Paul's beat Citronelle. So if Viger pulls the upset tonight, Corey, it's almost like you have a three-way tie going on between those three, if possible. And Williamson is up 14-3 over Citronelle right now. Right. So that kind of shakes things up a little bit as well. The Williamson sure Lions does. not going quietly. So Jackson and Williamson not out of it at all, not mathematically eliminated. So a lot of big games happening. Guardo with the punt. Pew is going to let that one go out of bounds. Great punt. Puts it out at about the five, maybe the six yard line. So Guardo flips the field for the Trojans and backs the blunt back up once again. Take a look at the 5A playoff contenders here. We'll get this graphic up for you. Something my buddy Wade Ford's been working on for us. We'll get it up and take a look at it here. 
We'll get back to that momentarily, get back down to the field, get some action. Nine minutes remaining here. Well, 9.09 remaining here in the first half. Blunt pinned back again, Corey. What can they do now? And we saw them in this similar situation a couple of moments ago, mm -hmm. had the punt and were able to flip the field. I think this time, if they're able to sustain some short passes and get some continuity going on offense, they're going to move quickly. Jacoby Davis has time, trying to connect with Collins Woods the third, pushed out of bounds, and there's the flag right in front of us. That call is going to be against Christian Williams, so that will set Blunt up with the first down. If you want to move the ball from – shadows of your own goal post, what better way to do that than with a free 15? And they didn't go for the short ball. They went for the deep and the juggler vein on first down and 10 and were able to get that pass interference call. Pretty easy call here for the crew. Pass interference on the Trojans. That'll call some 15. So that'll move the Leopards out of the, uh, close to the end zone there. Give them some breathing room, probably up to about the 20. We'll see where they mark it at. So ball at the 21-yard line. Blunt has some breathing room now, Corey, so they can get out and possibly get offense going here at nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. Well, like that does is it opens up Lonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator for Blunt's playbook, and Mr. Woods talked about the score being 7-3 to three and the Leopards being exactly where they want to be. And off the pew, he's juking and picks up a couple, gets over past the 25-yard line for maybe about five yards. Let's take a look now at the 5A he contenders here in the playoff. We just talked about it, St. Paul's at Viger. The they do have a playoff berth, playoff berth already clinched. Viger's already in as well. So really what's up for grabs is 3-4 and four, and who will be 3-4. and four. And as you can see, Citronelle and Williamson going at it tonight. And next week, that's a big game in itself, Corey. Jackson at Citronelle. Every region game is huge from here on out for those trying to make the playoffs. They'll quick out to Paul Malden. We saw this play early. It didn't go anywhere. And once again, it is snuffed out by Daft. And that's another back. textbook tackle by the Trojans. Jack Cushman. 6'1", 265-pound senior, just showing how you keep your head up, find the ball carrier, and just plant him on this turf here at Blunt. Third down for the Leopards after that penalty. Have only gained maybe a yard or two here, third and long. Coach Holly and the crew have to make some decisions. What will they do here as we... Get close to wrapping up here this second quarter. Seven minutes, approaching the seven-minute mark. Stoppage in play. And Coach Holly called time out, Corey. Maybe the play clock was running down. I didn't have my eyes on it. But not, not too long after I saw the signal of time out, I saw the clock hit zero. So Coach Holly wants to talk about some things. We got the 6A standings coming up right here. Another tough region, the one we're in tonight. We've talked about it earlier. So Daphne's here at Blunt. Sarah Land is playing Spanish Fort tonight as well. Last night, LaFleur picked up that win over Robertsdale. But technically, LaFleur, Baldwin County still in this thing, Corey. So it could go who knows which way. Let's say if Sarah Land beat Spanish Fort tonight or Blunt beat Daphne tonight, you know, it, it, you, you can't really map it out, but it's in front of you right here. But uh, I don't know how you are with your trigonometry and your algebra, Corey, but it's a lot of different ways this thing could play out the rest of the season. I know Spanish Fort leads Sarah Land 14 to 7 right now, and that's a big time matchup when you're talking about 6A playoff implications. Blunt goes on the road next week at Gulf Shores. If you notice, a lot of these teams have two region games remaining. Span it looks as if Spanish Fort, Sarah Lynn could possibly be in, but you never know who's going to be the one seed, the two or the three. It, it really hasn't been decided because Sarah Lynn, I mean, so Spanish Fort still has three region games left, Corey. So we're in week nine and you still can't figure it out. Ball tipped at the line, incomplete. Maurice McBride jumping all over the place. The guy probably got his big paws on that one. And here's what's very interesting with 7.26 remaining in the second quarter. Daphne's offense comes in averaging 20.57 points per game. 
Blunt's offense comes in averaging 31.3 points per game. You knew something was going to have to give because conversely, Daphne's defense only gives up 12 points right. a game. And then you look at Blunt, they come up giving 20 points a game. So something was going to have to change. And so far, it's been a defensive struggle. Line drive punt by Cass. Miles picks it up, does a spin move, approaches the midfield stripe, and a penalty marker is down on the field. Wonder what that call will be, a little line drive punt from Cass there. Block in the back. That's going to be a very easy call by the back judge being made. Happened right in front of him. And from where the flag was thrown right at the 40-yard line, the Trojans are already going to put it in reverse. Block in the back. So there's the mark off right there. Coming up at halftime, we have the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. We'll take it down into the stands and allow Kimberly to get a fan, see if she can get them taken care of with a Chick-fil-A prospect. Of course, they have to answer the question to get it correct. Back during the return, by the return team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So stick it around for that for the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. That penalty is going to push Daphne back to the 30-yard line. They had great field position, Corey, but that one penalty, you can definitely end up paying for it. So first and 10, ball on their own 30-yard line. And there's Jay Pogue up the middle. And one of our officials is he taken down. Take I do hit. believe it rolled up his ankle, mm. and he's going to be hurt on the play. Hate to see that. Yeah. He's pounding the turf yeah, in pain yeah. right now. And that was just a situation to where the runner could not avoid him, and his right. knee and leg and ankle got caught right underneath the runner puke. Well, Principal Woods won't have to worry about putting on his zebra stripes tonight. We do have a extra official on how to, if they need to bring one so down, but we're going to have an official's timeout. So unfortunate. Unfortunately, the breaks of the game, trying to have great placement, to get great vision, cover your zone that you're supposed to cover. And uh, Pogue just had nowhere else to go, Cor. And I'm not sure if we're able to take look at the replay in that situation, but in that situation, you just, you hate it for the official because again, Al, like you said, he was focused in, trying to get out of the way, just unable to do so. Got a look live coming up here, Citronelle and Williamson. We talked about scoring early, this game at last stadium. Citronelle trying to get on the board right there. The Wildcats, a big contender here in 5A Region 1. Loving the unis right there for Williamson, Corey. Those home uniforms looking great. Citronelle on top, I'm sorry, no, Williamson on top, 14 to 13 right now. And that probably was a fourth down play. It looks like ball over on downs possibly, Corey. And you look at the Williamson Lions. We had them a couple of weeks ago against the Viagra Wolves. They only have 28 players. Right. So a lot of guys playing both ways. But it's a home game at Ladd. Look for Williamson to do great things. Looks like the official was up and taking some steps. Great job for the Daphne training crew running out there immediately. Take a look at him. Maybe they'll tape him up at halftime and discussing if he needs to come out and take a break, too. And I believe that may be the call. Well, no, he's going to stay in, Cor. What a trooper the official is. Like I said, he just got rolled up on, tweaked that ankle a little bit, and right. the officials gathering to kind of get themselves together to discuss the exact game plan. It may be a situation to where the mm -hmm. officials on the field just switch positions a little right, bit right. to where he's in a position where there's a little bit less running involved. Take the load off of and him. And take the load off of him. You're always able to do that. Got some scores going to come in here for the games going on tonight. We've talked about a lot of implications happening last night. Fairhope all over Murphy. They're undefeated in region play. I watched a bit of that game last night. They Pirates look good, Corey. Theodore all over. Bryant 31-6. Big homecoming win for them. Heard LaMichael P. Ryan was in the house last night down in Theodore. And you look at the situation when you're able to be the Florida Gators and you have a bye, you like to see guys come back to yeah. the home and, and support what they once went through. McGill on top of Baker right there, 19-6. to six. As more scores come in, Foley all over MGM. Foley's a contender sitting quietly down there in about fourth or fifth place in 7A Region 1. Ball's on the 37 yard line of the Trojans. So they're not out of it as well. So we're back to action here. Second down, Daphne has the ball at their own 37 yard line. Hand off to Jay Pogue. Tries to get his momentum, but push back. 
And we talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast. One of our impact players was Mike Franklin, this six foot, 202 pound junior for the Daphne Trojans, already offered by the Memphis Tigers, has not touched the field here in the first half. Coach King talked about it earlier in the week about a possible ankle injury, but he had been practicing trying to play through it. Not sure if he's going to be a scratch tonight or whether he's going to see action in the second half. The pole pushed back, but his forward progress gives him enough to get the first down, trying to bounce it outside. Cannot escape those leopards. They're all over him. He takes a loss right there, moving Daphne to second down. And as I'm gazing across the sidelines at the Daphne Trojans, right. coaching staff standing right next to the offensive coordinator is number one, Mike Franklin. So he is dressed out tonight, just not quite sure if he was a late scratch and just unable to go due to that ankle. Right, maybe. Newman rolls out, has time. A little dump pass trying to connect with his tight end, Hunter Monty. Just out of his outstretched hands. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to Coach Kenny King. Matter of fact, he had just got off the bus, Corey, and he didn't make mention of Franklin or anything. But, you know, when the kids warm up, who knows what could have happened. And uh, probably could have tweaked it or just said, nah, let's not go for it. So we haven't seen him. Maybe we will, but maybe we won't. But right now, Pogue's getting all the carries. Well, you look at Mike Franklin had 10 rushes for 122 yards versus LaFleur, had nine rushes for 56 yards a week ago against Gulf Shores and a touchdown. But anytime he gets his hands on the football, he's a threat offensively. You take one of those Trojan horses away, gives Blunt a better chance. Third down for Daphne. Quick handoff to Pogue, trying to weave his way through all the Leopards. And boy, it's a pile of them waiting for him. And they drive him back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe it's for progress will get one or two if the officials are generous. Charles Mickles, one of the first players, one of the first Leopards to make Charles contact, 6'4", 235 pound senior for Blunt. And with the fourth down situation coming up, a very familiar scene for both of these teams as the punters are coming out. That's right. Pole Malden back and Pew back for Blunt to receive. And we have a timeout call by Coach Lev Holly of Blunt using his second time out of the first half. He wants to discuss some things with his player. Wanted to make sure this drive wasn't sustained by a fake or make sure his defensive special teams were watching out for the fake. You don't want to be able to give them an opportunity to continue to kill the clock with 5.07 remaining here in the second quarter. Yeah, as we approach Again, we like the halftime, five season. minutes, 5.07 remaining, you just talked about, Corey. Want to make sure your guys are on point, know what to do. We've seen a couple miscues of special teams twice tonight for Daphne and Blunt able to take advantage and get a field goal out of one of those miscues. Yeah, special teams' mistakes, again, have led the points off of mistakes. That's how the Leopards were able to get their three points. The Trojans able to score early in the first quarter, but with this instrumental and critical down and distance situation for the Trojans, you don't want you want to make sure everybody's on the same page. You yeah, absolutely do and also keep in mind with uh, Blunt, I'm uh, sorry, Daphne coming out in the first quarter, running, passing, having a more consistent flow this second quarter, Blunt has made some adjustments and not exactly the same Daphne team we saw in the first quarter. They kind of went up and down the field there, Corey. I think the adjustments were made by this defensive staff, defensive coordinator Lee Smith, got some feedback from his coordinators and has definitely done a good job making sure Daphne doesn't have anything easy. So, Pole Malt, I'm sorry, Trey John Pugh calls for the fair catch right there about the 20-yard line. We'll keep it right here. Got to thanks, got to thanks our folks over there hooking us up. David Boeing Sporting Goods got the powder blue polos on tonight. Corey, want to thank them and the crew right there at Azalea and our government with the old Skyland, Skyland Shopping Center, I believe. So, thank them for hooking us up with the polos looking good tonight. Brett Bowen and his staff, go visit them. They can take care of all your athletic needs. Basketball season's right around the corner. They have all your basketball apparel and also have your baseball, softball, and football apparel also. Looking for something to eat. Tender Bones Catering, they took care of our crew. Talk to Quentin Howard in the truck. Man, they're smiling from ear to ear. Tender Bones Catering, they'll take care of you just like they take care of us. Pew taking care of that ball right there, picks up one or two yards. Interesting situation here, under five minutes, blunt down by four. I wonder if Coach Lev Holly is going to go with a little more ball control, ball control, 
then maybe over the top, not leaving Daphne much time on the clock to score, Corey. You saw earlier Lonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator, took his shot on first down, trying to go vertical and got that pass interference call against the Trojans. Have them spread out wide to try to soften it up a little bit. Pass incomplete, just out of the outstretched hands of LeBaron Jones. And we are at third down already. You look at this quick throw, just trying to establish some type of rhythm and the blunt Offensive wide receiver, really, LeBaron Jones didn't have an opportunity to catch that football because the great Trojan defense that was played by Khalil Johnson was all on top of him. Third and about eight here for the Leopards. Jacoby Davis has time, pockets collapsing. He tries to get out. He does escape, but he's brought down Stretches the ball out. Maybe he got back to the original line of scrimmage, but that'll technically be a loss, Corey. And it is not one, not two, not three. Fourth down once again for Blunt. Andrew Gilbert, the defensive end, was able to shed the blocker and just taking a little bit too long. That clock went off in Jacoby Davis's head. He had to go ahead and try to tuck it and run, but the defender, Gilbert, was right there on top of him. And again, a punting situation. Kyle Cass back to punt here and back to receive. For Daphne, Jaquan Miles, and they're going to let that go out of bounds. That kick goes out of bounds. Wow. About the 48 yard line. Maybe the at That's where Newman and the Trojans will near the midfield stripe, but uh, about at the 47 yard line of Daphne. We're here inside the Leopards Den, but officially, Corey, it's called Harris Terry Stadium, named in honor of. Legendary coach don't Ben Harris don't and don't legendary coach Albert Terry, both coaches of Blunt High School. We know Coach Harris won a few championships here with the Leopards. So this is our first teleclass, first telecast inside of Harris Terry Stadium. And that's reflected on the scoreboard. They have it, a great sign and two great coaches, right. the great tradition of this Blunt Leopards program. Honoring those two legendary coaches is, is hats off to the Pritchard community. First and 10 for Daphne. Little quick out to Jay Pogue there. Up the middle he goes into Leopard territory and picks up the first down close to about the 35-yard line. One of the things that you start seeing now is Blunt starting to miss a lot of tackles, mm -hmm. starting to do a lot of arm grabbing. You look at the replay, and the quarterback Chance Newman had plenty of time to hit his wide receiver, but you look at the arm tackling not really wrapping up for the Leopards. Hand off to Pogue. He's almost, you it's could call him Mr. Everything for night. He's catching it. He's running it. He's doing it all. To the 31 yard line. Keeps that clock moving. It's Don't forget at halftime, it'll be the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. I saw Kimberly down there earlier looking for a contestant in the stands. She'll ask them a question. If they get it correctly, they'll pick up a Chick-fil-A prize pack. We'll stick around for that. Also, we'll have bands as well. It's and have some interviews for you coming up at halftime. Hogue on the move. Corey takes the pile with him to get the first down. And when you start looking at the Blunt Leopards defense, we go and look at the replay. A lot of arm tackling. Again, you must tackle these Trojans by the feet. If you don't wrap them up and get them down low, they're going to continue to get yards after contact. Yeah, you're right. Every week we talk about keep those legs moving, keep it churning. Hogue racked up at, at about the 21-yard line. At the line of scrimmage, basically, no gain on that play. And that's a good textbook tackle by LaQuante Hall, 5'9", 180-pound senior, comes in and makes a huge stop for the Blunt Leopards. His second and 10. Second down for Daphne here, trying to get into the red zone, extend their lead. They're up 7-3 to three over Blunt. A lot of folks may be tuning in and say, wow, quite a surprise. Blunt known for their explosive offense. Only three points on the board so far. Newman does get that out. And he connects with Dante Lee. And he picks up a few yards close to the first down marker. Let's see where they mark this at. I see one official on the near side. And on the far side, the other official. But he's stepping back now. Maybe he might be short. 
and look at Newman. He gets drilled on yep. the play, but is able, more importantly, to make the completion. And now the Daphne Trojans in this situation are going to be almost deep into the red zone area, somewhere we saw them be very effective on their first possession of the game. So they're in the red zone. They, he, he, he gets enough for the first down. Here come Newman and the Trojans. Battle in motion on jet sweep there. He takes it, cuts it up. Trying to get to the 10-yard line, and he's met by Blunt Leopard and stopped. Overstreet cleaning up for the Leopards on that play, and he did a good job coming from his middle linebacker position as we take a look at that replay. In motion, cleaning up top. You had one high and one low. The Leopards tag teaming on that tackle. Second down for Daphne. Hand off to Pogue, does a little stutter step. Look at him go, Corey. Almost to the goal line. Gets the first down. That'll set up Daphne first to go. It was like he was running in slow motion, but he was literally picking the spots he wanted to hit. And gaining yards, shifting left and right. You look at the replay. Great run. And he goes north and south and then decides to go ahead and make one a little juke move. And like first to goal now for the Trojans. The Leopards desperately need to stop before the half. Yeah, this will be a big stop that they could do it. Hand off to Pogue. No chance. Newman keeps it. Quarterback keeper around the edge. But will they call him down there? Touchdown. I think it should I be a touchdown. I believe it's a touchdown. I don't see many officials with the signal, maybe because he dropped the ball when he got into the end zone, but head referee Joy Pilgrim not disputing anything, so on the on the field comes Dorado for the extra point. One of those run pass options. Right. You look at the quarterback Chance Newman taking it out of the belly of his running back, deciding to take it on his own. The ball had already crossed the plane, which led to six points for the Daphne Trojans. It's Garrado with the extra point, up and good. Daphne on top, 14 to three. And Corey, who would have thunk it? Blunt on their last possession, we talked about it. Wonder if Coach Hyler's gonna run it a bit, run it a bit, then go over the top. And if they score, don't leave much time for Daphne. But if they don't score, don't leave much time for Daphne. They went three and out, and the exact opposite happened. Daphne gets the touchdown. Wow. First possession of the game, when the Blunt Leopards went three and out, Daphne was able to put seven points on the board. Right here to end the second quarter, the same exact scenario occurred. Anytime the Blunt Leopards go three and out, it spells trouble and has made points on the board for the Trojans. Also keep in mind, Daphne will be receiving the second half kickoff. So that score right there is big for Coach Kenny King and the Trojans. Daphne already out on the field ready to kick off, and Blunt hasn't even come out. I believe Coach Lev Holly had a quick little come-to-Jesus meeting with his special team and, right there, Corey. And I can guarantee you wow. this. He's going to have a huge meeting, probably peel the paint off the locker room in the field house for these Blunt Leopards. We've seen them be a second-half team, unfortunately, but you don't want to get too far behind and put yourself in a situation to where your best football is in front of you when you had an opportunity right. in the first half to go get yourself a lead or at least make it a little bit closer than 14 to three. Eduardo's well, been kicking this ball deep all night long, just laying into the pigskin. Let's see where he lands this one at. And it is on the way for another touchback. It's a touchback. The ball will be so Blunt will get the ball first and 10. Line at their 20 yard line. And what you have to make sure of right here, if you're the Lepers, that you don't give the Trojans an opportunity here with 54.6 seconds remaining in the half to score any more points. Right. You wanna make sure that you secure the football, take care of it first and foremost, don't commit any penalties or mental mistakes going into the half. Davis tosses that ball out, gets it to LeBaron Jones. That pass is complete. So that pass is complete. He's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, look down there on the sideline. 
former blunt quarterback, Kadarius Tony, Corey. So in town, they got that uh, the bye this week, the Gators. So he's in town. He's here supporting senior night here in town. A young man that I think should be the starting quarterback for the University of Florida. We see how dynamic he is. Not only me, but the old ball coach thinks he should get more <laughs> touches as well, Steve Spurrier. Pass incomplete by Jacoby Davis trying to get it out to Collins Woods the third. And that will take Blunt, Corey, to an a very familiar situation. I'm surprised to see it a lot. Third down once again for the Leopards. And it's 43 seconds left. They got the ball just under one minute. This offense not clicking the way we're used to seeing it. Well, I tell you what, Al, if they're not able to secure a first down here or run out this clock, the Trojans, I don't think, will sit on that horse. They'll take a shot or two oh, yeah. and try to add to this 14-3 lead. Big play right here for the Leopards. Davis trying to keep the drive alive, juking and moving. He has enough for the first down and meets a wall of Trojans right there at the 35. But he does pick up the first down. He stays in bound. The, stays in bounds. The clock will stop temporarily. Probably the best play Blunt has run a long time because when the play clock starts, it won't be much left on the game clock. Jacoby Davis decided to go ahead and tuck and run this, and I do believe that's one of the largest gains of the night for right. this Leopard offense. So we're under 30 seconds right here. Blunt will have to snap it at least once before halftime. And, Corey, you never know with Tony here on the sidelines, maybe Coach Hyland will get him to say a couple words to these guys as well. That could be a possible face mask. I don't see a flag, Corey, but you could see where the defender got a piece of the face mask of the leper there. And good screen call. Trey John Pugh was able to get the football, and no face mask was called. So we're going to start the half at 14 to 3, Al. So no flag on the play. Players have left, and referee Jeremy Pruitt signal it is halftime. So wow, Daphne on top, 14 to 3. Quite a surprise here. We talked about this Leopard offense not as explosive as we've known it to be, Corey. And I think what's going to be important for the Leopards is just for them to have some completions and gain some confidence offensively. The defense has done a good job, but they're becoming a little bit tired being on the field a little too long. You see a lot of arm tackles start going on. So this rest will be essential for the Leopards to recoup a great 24 minutes of yeah. football right in front of us, Al. Saw a great opportunity right there for Daphne to get on the board. They took advantage of it, got the touchdown. They're going to get the ball back starting off the second half. So Coach Kenny King, he goes out and gets that last touchdown before halftime. Yeah, and that's going to be a critical score because the three points that the Leopards were able to get, that was huge, keeps them from being blanked in the first half. But the two touchdowns by the Trojans have been done after three and outs by the Blunt Leopards. All right, we've called that a lot. Third down here, third down there. Blunt has not been explosive. We know they have receivers, tall guys. Shortest guy is Paul Malden at 5'8", but he's not been able to connect with Collins Woods tonight. Jacoby Davis has been running around from the Daphne defense, score. Yeah, a lot of short screens, bubble screens. I think you'll see a lot more of that in the second half. They've gone for the home run ball a couple of times and right. connected on it. And with that being said, they were able to draw a couple of flags also, which moved the sticks. And any way you're able to move the chains and get productive yards and try to flip the field, that's going to be important. Let's take it down to the sidelines. And we have Kimberly Dunn with head coach Kenny King. Coach King, how do you feel about how your team's performing so far tonight? Um, they're, they're performing uh, okay. Uh, we still have some mistakes that we have to get uh, taken care of. Um, you know, we was driving, and uh, we killed it with um, some mistakes. But, again, uh, we just have to go in and have time, regroup, uh, come out with some more energy, and uh, see if we can uh, get away with this win. Yeah, a little bit more specifically, what are some things that y'all need to improve on for this second half of the game? Uh, defensively, we just got to make sure those those fast wide receivers stay in front of us. I mean, they running, they running, and um, they're just not connecting. But we got to make sure we're, we're uh, it's very important that we stay uh, behind them. Um, offensively, we just got to, again stop making mistakes. Um, you know, making sure we finishing uh, the runs, making sure that we connect on the pass. Uh, but again, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with what we've done so far. Uh, we now, but we got to win another half. Nice, right. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. 
All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. She's down there with Coach Kenny King. He's on top 14 to 3, Corey. And we'll wonder if we'll get a look at Mike Franklin coming out in the second half here. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting key. He's our impact player. We know, again, his dynamic Trojan horse running style. But as long as he's on the sidelines, it's going to be up to Mr. Poe to have some productivity offensively for the Trojans. All right, we'll be back with halftime action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Hello, I'm Helena Tyler. I would like to invite you to join me for Inside Education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education right here on the MCPSS TV Network. I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. Welcome back. It's halftime at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Daphne on top, 14-3 over Blunt. Joining us right now on top of the press box, we have Miss Christy July. She's with Career and Technical Education. We've interviewed you before this yes, season. Uh, welcome back once again. How are you doing, Miss July? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Oh, no doubt about it. I told you, you're always welcome to come by. Thank you. <laughs> so, always a pleasure. Career and Technical Education. Let's talk about that department, what you guys do for the school system. Yes, sir. So we have two areas within our Career and Technical Education Department. We have Workforce Development okay. and the Career and Technical Education Curriculum arm of things. And our goal is to work to prepare students uh, for the careers and industries that we have available regionally and okay. nationally and so we bring in experts in those fields whether it's marketing engineering uh, your stem curriculums or uh, we also have culinary arts which is fun for students yeah. that we bring in experts in those fields that teach our students the skills that they need and we connect them with business and industry so they can get that hands-on experience in the workplace um, I heard Principal Woods talking earlier about his signature academy, it being yes. health. Uh, how would you all help Blunt out, say, since they're health? How, how would that tie in with your department? Well, they are career and technical education. So those instructors are a part of our department okay. here. And so at Blunt, we offer the CNA program mm -hmm. as well as sports medicine. So our students are able to work with hospitals such as Mobile Infirmary okay. to get experience into the CNA world. And of course, we don't want students just to leave us um, with a CNA certification and think that's it. So we're looking to uh, have those students work in the right. hospital to see the ver vastness of that industry. All right, we're talking with Christy July. She works with the Career and Technical Education Department with the Mobile County Public School Systems. Coming up, signature showcases yes. going on. I heard that, I saw it I, elsewhere. Talk to everyone about what signature showcase is about. Yes, well, we have 12 high schools in Mobile County, right. and it's very difficult for teachers and um, also parents and students to be able to meet each other and learn about what's mm -hmm. available at each high school. So okay. every year, this is our third annual Signature Academy Showcase where we bring all 12 high schools to one location, okay. including Envision, our online school, right. as well as Augusta Evans, and which is our special needs school, right. and our career and technical education centers and a variety of departments that teachers um, and parents and students may have questions of. And so it's a one location on October 24th, 4.30 to 6.30 at the Mitchell Center on South Alabama's campus. 
where it will be open for parents and students to come in, 7th and 8th graders, to learn about what's available okay. for their students and um, the process for applying if they're interested in transitioning or applying to a school that they're not zoned to attend. Okay. I was just about to ask you, is this free to the public? Do you have to make an appointment, reservation? How does it work? The Mitchell Center is a huge building, so I, I take is. it this is a huge affair. But it what is. do they have to do to like get in? They don't have to do anything okay. to get in besides show up. So the doors will open about 4 o'clock, um, and people will be able to start registering as they come in. Okay. And we'll officially start the event at 4.30. And you can walk around and talk to as many schools and departments as you like. Uh, we really make it a family-friendly event okay. so okay. that you can get your questions answered in a concise manner by everyone uh, that you need to see and need to speak to. So the 12 high schools, they'll all be represented, uh, all be represented there. Will mm -hmm. Principals be there as well, or just primarily the educators who work in that signature academy at that school? No, you'll see principals, okay. you'll see counselors, you'll get to talk to the students and hear their perspective and wow. feedback on their experiences that they've had there. You also get to speak to the instructors for those programs. Okay. So you get to have that inside view of what's actually happening in the schools. All right, speaking with Miss Krista July, Signature Showcase coming up October 24th. What time again and what location? 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Mitchell Center on South Alabama's campus. All right, well, we're glad to have you back once again. It is week nine. I don't know if you'll yes. be able to make it the last two weeks, but you said you'd come back and you did. It you held time. to your word. Yes, sir, all the time. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Krista July with thank Career you. and Technical Education. Don't forget the Signature Showcase coming up. Up October 24th at the Mitchell Center starting at 4 p.m. We'll be back with more action at halftime. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates and have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. It's no surprise that the University of South Alabama's College of Education can prepare you for an exciting career in public education. But it may surprise you that this same College of Education can prepare you for an exciting career in a broad variety of fields, like these. Contact us today and let us show you the world of career opportunities that are yours through USA's College of Education. Welcome back to Harris Terry Stadium. It's halftime here at Blunt High School. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn is getting us ready for the Chick-fil-A Trivia Challenge. We are here on the field for the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. I have asked one of the, um, actually the captain of the cheerleaders, Annabelle, to answer our question tonight. And if she gets it right, she gets this awesome Chick-fil-A prize pack. There is a cup in here from Mobile County Public School Systems. You get a couple of free meals to Chick-fil-A, some cool glasses, a bracelet, a little stuffed animal so you can share it with your friends. So hopefully you will get our question right. Do you know anything about baseball? Not really. <laughs> There's hope for you yet, hopefully. All right, here's your question. It's about a famous Mobile baseball player. 
All right, the question is, baseball legend Hank Aaron was born on February 5th, 1934 in the state of Alabama. But what city was he born in? And you have multiple choice. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right, was he born in Dothan, Birmingham, Mobile, or Selma, Alabama? I would go with Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama? Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> That was a good guess. All right, you get everything in here. Thank you so much. Thanks for being great cheerleaders. Y'all did good. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Mobile, Alabama, the birthplace of hammering Hank Aaron. Right now, let's hammer out the sounds of the mighty marching leopard band. Notice the rock, the high step, the moving and the grooving. The mighty marching ever band is simply Alabama's finest. to give it to me baby by Rick James. treat tonight's feature tune pieces of me by let us see
sounds of the mighty marching Leopard Band of Blunt High School here at halftime at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Joining me right now, I have a former Leopard and right now a current Florida Gator, Mr. Kadarius Tony. How you doing there, Kadarius? I'm doing pretty good. How does it feel to be back here at Blunt High School? You were a senior last year, a senior now. How does that feel for you to come back tonight, man? Uh, I feel pretty good to come back and represent. Um, it's all about foundation to me. You don't never forget where you come from. Right. So I did have to pay my dues. All right. So off week for the Gators right here. We'll get right to it. How's it feel to play in the SEC, man? Uh, I feel pretty good. It's pretty much like high school to me. Okay. Uh, like as a mental standpoint, because Blunt, it really got me mentally focused. Okay. And physically, uh, working in the weight room all the time, lifting, lifting as much as I can. Uh, I mean, really just, it feel good, like all that, for all that to pay off, really. <laughs> now, let's talk about that foundation. I know Coach Lev Holly talks about brick-by-brick brick mentality. You can't build a house without a good foundation. Let's talk about academics, man. You had to get your books in order to stay on the field in the SEC. Let's talk about that foundation through the school system that you received here at Blunt High School. Uh, the foundation was really coming in the classroom, having that, that, mentality, that mentality that I take to the football field, which okay. is like working hard. Uh, we had a lot of hard classes that mentally prepared me. Like we had a, um, a college career ready class. Uh, it really got me prepared for college. Wow. It, it put like um, the pressure that, okay. <laughs> that college really take. Uh, so it wasn't no pressure when I got there. Those college prep classes basically prepped you to be ready to go to college. Yes. <laughs> I understand that. So let's talk about college right now. What are you majoring in at University of um, Currently, I'm thinking about majoring in criminal justice okay. to become a uh, U.S. Marshal, but I might really change. I really don't know yet. I have to get deeper into it to see if I want to change or not. I understand. I understand. We're talking with Kadarius Tony right now. I can't say red shirt. I'm going to say true freshman. Florida Gator, we've seen you quarterback. You play slot. You play receiver. <laughs> Man, you're doing it all. I see why they signed you as an athlete down. How does that feel to be playing in the highest caliber of college football in the nation? Uh, I feel pretty good to represent the uh, city of Mobile, Alabama. Um, it's just a great feeling okay. to know that I went somewhere that I know I can put as much time as I need to right. to get where I want to go. Now, the coaching, let's talk about that. You said off the top, kind of a little similar to what you had at Blunt. Do you feel your coaching from the Blunt coaches prepared you for the SEC? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Coach Johnson always say tough skin, short memory, so just took that mentality to college, Johnson. I got you. Since you're playing for Florida right now, what, what are you enjoying the most? Is it quarterback? Is it playing slide? Is it just being in the game, man? Yeah, what what uh, are you enjoying the most? It's really just being in the game, just being out there in front of the 90,000 fans. Wow. Take us down to the swamp. What does it feel like? I know you've been probably working on your Gator Chomp. You got your Gator gear. What, what is it like to be in the swamp as a freshman in the SEC playing, man? The greatest feeling. Just 90,000 people just supporting you to the fullest, okay. going against somebody that <laughs> that's probably going to lose. Um, I mean, it's, it's really a great feeling to just step out there. Got you. Like everything just hit on top of you. So it's like being... So oh, no, <laughs> I can't explain it. Unbelievable. It, 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 unbelievable, yeah. Talking with Kadarius Tony, before you get out of here, did you have a chance to talk to your uh, former teammates in the classroom, I mean in, in the locker room at halftime but before the game, give them some words of encouragement tonight? Um, I, haven't, I, haven't had, I haven't had the chance to talk to them um, okay. in the locker room or anything, but on the sideline I gave them words of encouragement, uh, telling them keep keep pushing, really. That's what we had to do. I got you. I got you. All right, Kadarius Tony, we appreciate it. Former blunt quarterback and doing his thing at the University of Florida. We appreciate you taking our time to stop by, man. You're welcome. All right, let's take it now to your former coach. You want to toss it to Kimberly to talk to uh, Coach Holly? Yeah. Go ahead. T uh, say, let's toss it to Kimberly and talk to <laughs> Coach Holly. Go ahead. Let's toss it to Kimberly to talk to Coach Holly. Good job. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Coach Holly. Coach, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room during halftime? I mean, you just got to I mean, you gotta execute. I mean, and, and they're doing a good job up front of trying to keep us off balance, but you know, we're not execute. I think defense is playing well, but you can't keep them on the field. So coming out of the second half, man, you just got to come out and, and, and grind it out. You know what I mean? Try to find a way to put the points up and get some key stops. Yeah, so what did you say to your team to motivate them to do that? I don't think these type of games need motivation. I mean, I think if I got to motivate you to get a chance to have a, have a, a first-round playoff game at home, then, hey, we got a problem. So I think the biggest thing about us right now is that we got to go dig within ourselves. And we got to find a way to be blunt that we know. Because right now, that, that first half wasn't blunt. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you're able to find that second half blunt. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kimberly. Right there, Coach Lev Holly basically saying they've got to do what they have to do. They've got to play blunt football to get back in this game, Corey. Down 14 to 3 right now. Not a position we normally hear or see the blunt leopards in, Corey. Yeah, blunt football means 
tough smash mouth football, being able to dominate the line of scrimmage, something they've not been able to do thus right. far in the first half. We've seen them have to go to the passing game and not really be effective. We take a look at the stats here coming up, and it'll be indicative of how the Leopards have struggled offensively. They were able to put those three points on the board, which was very important because right. that's better than a goose egg. But what's more important for the Blunt Leopards is when you look at the passing yards, only 25 passing yards. 51 wow. total yards, only one first down the entire first half. We didn't see those sticks moving, and that's not just going to get it done. On the flip side, you look at the Trojans having success throwing the football, 80 total passing yards, uh, and also rushing the football for 58 yards. So penalties has been a factor also in this contest. The Blunt Leopards have not committed as many penalties as the Daphne Trojans have. Right. But with that being said, Al, they're going to have to find a way offensively to pick up more than one first down in the second half. Have and to. with this explosive offense, yeah. we know it's very possible to do. 51 total yards. That is an absolute astonishment right there. We do know Blunt had the uh, penalty there in the first quarter at five yards. They probably got a few more. But they haven't done much on offense. So that one first down doesn't surprise me at all. But what does surprise me are the numbers that we're looking at. And not surprise right here as we talked to you earlier in the first half Daphne receiving the kickoff they scored before halftime so getting a score right here wow what would they do to the game court putting them up 21 to 3 we know Blunt has come back a few times this year but my goodness we saw earlier in the season against Spanish Fort this same Blunt Leopard team trailed the Spanish Fort Toros 42 to 14 before falling eventually at the end of the game 52 to 49. So we know they're capable of scoring in bunches. We'll see if Coach Lev Holly locker room speech will be effective. All right, Blunt goes with a little pooch kick there, but it is handled by Trent Battle, and Daphne has great field position. Ball at their own 38-yard line. So if Coach Holly was trying to do a little chess match move there, it didn't work out because Daphne was all over that kickoff. Yeah, in that situation, to start it with the pooch kick, they were hoping that they would be able to probably catch it out of the sky. With it going 10 yards, it becomes a live football. Now it's going to be up for this Leopard defense. We saw them get a little tired in the second quarter. Sure did. No arm tackles. Hopefully right here they'll be in a situation if you're the defensive coordinator for the Blunt Leopards, Lee Smith, you're hoping to get them three and out or create a turnover. And look at Daphne here, Corey. You called it right on the head. They're coming out going for the jugular. But, no, they take everyone out. Little quarterback keeper, Chance Newman, Newman, Chance Newman picks up a couple of yards. He's no one was in the backfield. Also, we don't see Mike Franklin on the field as well. So it's second down and eight. But it looks like Daphne's trying to get on the board quickly here. Cortland Martin, defensive end, 6'2", 240-pound junior for the Blunt Leopards, making the stop. Hand off to Jay Pogue. He ran it a lot in the first quarter, and he's running it right now over the midfield stripe into Leopard territory. First down for Daphne, and they are moving the sticks already. And that's something that you did not want to happen if you're the Blunt Leopards. Now you're right at midfield. The playbook is wide open for offensive co-offensive coordinators James Moore and Joseph Horn for the Trojans. First down ball at the 48-yard line. They hand off to Pogue again. It's Look at him running, Corey, to the outside, to the numbers. He's picking his spots. It's almost like he's running, and Blunt is standing still. And that's what we saw in that second touchdown drive as we look at the instant replay. He just lowers his shoulder once he gets past the line of scrimmage. We, at 5'9", 205 pounds, we mentioned he had 17 rushes for 117 yards last week versus Gulf Shores. He's going to eclipse the 100-yard mark tonight if he keeps running that hard. Another first down for Daphne on the move. Ball inside the 40. Pogue once again picking his spots. It's Coach Kenny King, King is continuing to give him the rock. Keep that ball control going. If you got a good thing, don't give it up. Yeah, I think that's a great weakness that they found within this blunt leopard defense. And with that being said, Al, positive yards early in the play calls are what's going on here to start the second half for the Trojans. Second and about five for Daphne. Chance Newman looking over to the sideline. Getting the call from the offensive coordinator. Since the kickoff, they got great field position. Ball they on 38. They're just continuing to move down the field. Newman back to pass. A little quick out to battle. Finds him on that little tunnel screen, Corey. 
He pushes it up toward the first down marker. Maybe he'll come up a little short here. Looks like it's going to be third down. And we've seen Battle be very, very productive tonight. They've gotten the ball to him several times. They've tried to go to him vertically as we look at the replay. Like you mentioned, the tunnel screen, he takes it and gets more positive yards. Being active is Trent Battle. Very high percentage throws that Coach Kenny King and the uh, coaches are calling right here. Hand off up the middle to Poe, and he takes the pile across the first down, down stick and does pick it up. Approaching the 20 yard line, close to the red zone once again for Daphne. And let's look at my checklist. We talked about for Daphne what they had to do. They had to be consistent in all three phases. In the first half, they weren't consistent in the special teams yeah. factor, but they so far have been able to control the clock with the balance that they've had offensively. First and 10 for Chance Newman and the Trojans on the move. Does get that little jet sweep handoff to battle. Cuts around the edge. Flags coming in from everywhere. We pretty much know what that call will probably be turned up to end. And Sidney Collins is trying to arm tackle on the play, trying to tackle up high. You have to go down low and square yourself up. That penalty is going to be called against the Trojans, and that's a break that the Blunt Leopards caught in that situation because a great upright run, mm -hmm. again, by Trent Battle. We've seen him on the jet sweeps. Right. We've seen him be a vertical wide receiver. We've seen him tunnel screen action. So Trent Battle is the man that a lot of confidence Chance Newman has in him. Against the offense, five, ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We'll replay first down. You can see the excitement is right there. Collins Woods, the third on defense right now, Corey helping out the Blunt Leopard, so that will push Daphne back. First down and about 20 here, here for the Trojans. The Little quick pass out to tight end Hunter Monty. They get it back to the original line of scrimmage there. As we said earlier, high percentage throws Coach Kenny King and his coaches are calling here. And with that situation and that tight end throw, to MJ Collins, Al, a lot of success is being shown. They're being very deliberate on how far the ball is being thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. Confidence being gained with completions, positive completions. First down ball right about the 20 yard line, close to the original line of scrimmage. Second down and about eight. Handoff to the up back. I'm sorry, not the up back, but coming around the edge on the sweep there. On Christian the Williams. Now he's playing on the <laughs> offense side coming in. Yeah, you look and sometimes you put your best athletes on the Christian field. Right. You mentioned Collins Wood the third the being court. on defense for the Blunt Leopards. He's the dynamic wide Williams. receiver. Christian Williams has offers from Michigan, Memphis, Jacksonville State, and Arizona. He plays basketball and runs Down track and 11, can play yard, both 11, ways, 11. as evident on that play for the Trojans. Close to the first down marker. It's third down. This is right about the area Daphne was at before that last penalty that pushed him back. Pogue up the middle. It's Pew. And, and he and is Pugh. inside the inside 10, the ten gets line. the first down for Daphne. So that's going to set them up first and goal at the 747 mark. Daphne continuing to drive. First possession of the third quarter for them. And what not you do not want to see right here Pugh. is the Blunt Leopards give up a touchdown. Because no. trailing 21 to 3, even though you have that high explosive powered offense, it's been sputtering and it just needs to be lit a fuse by this defense Pugh. getting a stop right here. Little confusion right there, but Pogue is trying to escape. Takes it outside. And that play went nowhere, Corey. Just utter confusion for Daphne there. Hopefully we can get the replay, see what maybe broke down. But wow, that's a loss for the Trojans. But the pursuit by the Leopards is something that you want to see. You look at the replay, like you said, the miscommunication maybe on the jet sweep yeah. or handoff. Nonetheless, the pursuit by the Leopards defense was intense and they got the negative stop that they wanted. Second and goal, ball right about at the 15 and a half yard line. Newman has time and he gets it out complete. It's completed. Gets that. Yes, that is a reception. Brought down by Dante Lee. He loses his helmet. Means he'll probably have to come out of play, Corey. But great play. He's headed to the sideline. Big, big 
big game right there for Daphne. His helmet comes off on the play, but not the pigskin. Make oh. sure he secures the catch. He's thrown to the ground viciously. It was a legal tackle, but the pigskin was held on to. That's the most important possession that the Trojans have had. Now it's going to put them back in a goal line to go situation. Third and go. Great camera work by our crew right there. Ball came right into the left, and we have penalty markers on the field here. Daphne setting up a third and goal. Let's see what Joey Pilgrim and the crew discuss here, and what the call may be. They are discussing in depth here, Corey, because we saw flags come in from each, each and every area. Former coach Santee Gamble say, dirty yellow rag all on the field. <laughs> so they're sorting out what the penalty will be. All right, here's the call from Joey Pilgrim. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike on the offense. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. The penalties will offset. It'll still be third down. So, Corey, maybe some, some chippiness, some words are being said, and the officials want to nullify all that. Yeah, you want to nip it in the bud because you don't want this game to be, get out of contest. Right. And we know when you have offsetting penalties, it's going to basically be a redo for both teams. But I guarantee the officials on the field have let all players and participants know that any further unsportsmanlike acts will result in disqualification from the contest. Yeah, let, we'll talk about that coming up a little bit about officials and what, what the hard work and great job they do and maybe kind of put a little explanation behind some things here. All right, it's third and goal, Corey, for Daphne. Here come Newman and the Trojans from the run of the Leopards. As we get the ball ready for play here. Battle in motion. They hand off to their money guy, Pogue, and he walks into the end zone for a touchdown as Daphne extends their lead 20 to three over Blunt. And just like that, being 21 to three, the 5'9", 205 pound junior finds Pater and Jay for six, read option, decides to keep it in his belly and he is able to go and walk in untouched. We mentioned last week he had two rushing touchdowns against Gulf Shores. Well, we know for a fact he's added and padded those stats tonight. Guardo with the extra point. Kick is up, it's up. and it is it good. Is good. So Daphne on top, 21 to three over Blunt the at the 629 the mark here at Air Harris Terry Stadium. While we have a break, let's take a live look in over the legendary Lab People Stadium, Williamson and Citronelle going at it right now. That's a big 5A Region 1 battle. So Williamson on top, 14 to 13 over Citronelle. Big game here for the Lions tonight, Cora. And like you said, the Williamson Lions kind of controlled their own destiny. They're kind of overlooked. Right. They played St. Paul's to a 9-6 contest. Played extremely tough in an overtime loss to the Viger Wolves at Pritchard Stadium a couple weeks ago. Can go and get this home win against the Centennial Wildcats. That will be exactly where Coach Sumter would like to be, looking at a W instead of a loss. Yeah, they're pretty much controlling, controlling on destiny. They took all the heavy hitters earlier in the season, St. Paul's, Jackson, Viger. So now they're kind of on the backside of that schedule, catching the easy route out, Corey. Blunt up 21 to three, I'm sorry. Daphne up 21 to three over Blunt right now. Third quarter, 629, I'm Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, and on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn. Quite a surprise here with Daphne with such an extended lead. Thought we'd have a little tighter, a little much tighter contest. And Guardo belts out another one into the end zone, so that's a touchback. Blunt receives the ball on the 20. Kids are still on the field blocking. Hopefully get this chipping us up out of here. A lot at stake here tonight for both these teams, Corey. 
And I agree 100% when you say a lot is at stake because you're looking at a situation, we talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast, where the first and second seeds have a home game. The third and fourth place seeds have to travel, and you have to spend money rather than make money yeah. in your own stadium, get out of the friendly confines, and travel somewhere that you're not familiar with. So that's what's at stake here tonight, Al. First to 10 for the Leopards, ball at their own 20, down 21 to three, and across the middle, connects with Jamarcus Pole Malden. So Blunt trying to get things going, playing tempo right now. Pushes that ball up to about the 27 yard line, so it'll be second and three for the Leopards. At least they had positive yards on first down. That's what's very important, You're something right. that we haven't seen with the exception of the scoring drive that led to a field goal. Interception, trying to connect with Paul Malden, and that ball is intercepted, dropped right into the hands of number 24 for Daphne, ja Jawan Miles. His brother Jaquan plays on offense. Jawan Miles with the interception right there, Corey. Yeah, you have Jawan and Jaquan, but Jawan, the 5'8", 145-pound junior, comes up, and you look at the timing on the play, just the communication was bad in between receiver and quarterback, and that just can't happen if you're the Blunt Leopards at this point in time, trailing 21 to three in this contest. I will say the Leopards, they have been attempting a lot of passes to Paul Malden tonight. We haven't called Jones name that much, and Collins was the third name that much, but we've called Jamarcus Paul Malden a lot, so they've intended a lot of passes for him tonight, and that one not coming out the way they wanted to. Jared Lee around the edge. I'm sorry, not Jared Lee. Battle. Battle. I keep calling him Jared Lee for some reason, but Battle with that jet sweep picks up a couple for Daphne, taking them to second down. Great field position for Daphne right here. And you talked about how good Battle looks. 6'1", 180-pound freshman. Freshman. Not many freshmen getting an opportunity here in Coastal Alabama to hit the varsity field on Friday nights and feel those Friday night lights. We talked about the fact Franklin not playing tonight, but Pogue and Battle picking up that slack, Corey, and they are doing it. Coming around the edge right there, Christian Williams, Christian Williams in on offense again. Takes a loss there. Good tackle by Kelsey Hill. Comes in with 32 tackles, three forced fumbles, and one interception. The Blunt Leopards need to produce a turnover on downs or some type of strip sack, right. something to really give them that boost to get their crowd back into it. Need to get the defense to hold right here. Third and long for Daphne. Newman waiting for the snap. Under 15 seconds on the play clock. Newman escapes the pocket, ha does have a receiver, and dumps it off to Miles. And he's got room. Look at him dodging the blunt players into the end zone. Jaquan Miles. Oh, he did step out. Stepped out so right he's at the five-yard line. So that's coming back, Corey. Stepped out. Great, great eyes with the binoculars there at the five. Yeah, and in that situation, you go back and you look at the patience. Patience, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, scrambles and avoids contact and just dumps it down to Jaquan Miles, who makes the reception. And you get the great camera work showing his foot step out on that white chalk line there. First and goal opportunity now for the Trojans, trying to capitalize and get points off turnovers. Yeah, back into the scoring zone for them. Inside the 10, hand off to Jay Pogue. And he's wrapped up. Second and goal for Daphne. Good tackle by the Blunt Charles Leopards. Lucas Kyle Cass on the, on the tackle. And 420 and remaining. You want to, if at all possible, to hold the Trojans to a field goal here. You definitely don't want them to tack on another six or seven with the extra point on the board. Do not, do not. Daphne trying to open this game wide up here. Look quick pass, too high for Miles. And he could have brought that down, but too high from Newman. Takes Daphne to third down. We saw them go to the running game when they kind of got bogged down earlier in the red zone. We saw them give it to number six, Pogue, who's, again, already had numerous rushing yards, close to 100 tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly right where they go again, trying to sustain and get a little bit closer Here to the goal Newman line. And the, and the way Guardo's been kicking it, even if they don't get it in right here, they're pretty confident they could get a field goal. That pass incomplete, tried to get it out to Williams. 
And that pass incomplete, so it takes Daphne to four down, fourth down. Not surprised. Gerardo That's on to kick incomplete. and attempt a field goal here. And if you're looking at any type of moral victory, it will be if the Trojans are only able to come away with three points right here with you only trailing now if they're able to convert this field goal 24 to three. I'll be placing the Ravia right about the 24 yard line there. I'm sorry about the 14 yard line, Corey. So almost like a little chip shot here for Guardo. And did the Lepers jump across? We do see the penalty markers. Offside. All in close. Referee the Pilgrim can't get his mic. There he is. Five, half the distance to go. Still, still will remain fourth down, but half the distance to the goal. So maybe Coach Kenny King might go for this one, Corey. It looks like he's bringing Newman and the offense back in here, see if they can punch this one in. Here come Newman back. They don't want three, they want six. That will be a huge stop wow. if the Blunt Le Leopards are able to turn away the Trojans right here on the goal line. We saw them earlier go on a quick slant pass on second and third down. It was incomplete. They had success running the football. So let's see right here if Kenny King is going to call a timeout. I believe he has called a timeout. He wants to discuss this. I'm sorry, no, Blunt has called timeout. Coach Lev Holly has called timeout, Corey, to get his troops together. We saw Pogue score one. We also saw Battle score one. And we thought Pogue was going to score that second touchdown, but no, Chance Newman had the quarterback keeper around the edge and got him six. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn, what's going on? All right, guys, when I speak with these coaches before the game, I asked them what separates your teams from one another. And really both of them said we have to have a great matchup tonight, but what is going to separate them is who can execute better. And those were the words out of both coaches' mouths. And so it seems that this Daphne team has really rallied together and seems to be executing more effectively than Blunt is so far. Thank you, Kimberly. Had some audio problems with it's her right there, down. but we do understand what she's getting across. It's very important and right now to execute, back. and especially right now for Daphne to execute. So Coach Kenny King says no. The chess match, chess match goes on, but he's going to take the points right here, Corey. It appears as if he will take the points. We talked about it a week ago. You don't want to turn away points, especially when you're dip this deep in the Leopards' territory. Almost like an extra point for Gawato here. It's up. Puts it up, and the field goal is it's good. Good. So Daphne, 24 to three. So points off turnovers right there. They get a field goal out of that interception by Miles. And we've seen the Daphne Trojans been able to capitalize throughout tonight's contest with points off turnovers. And I think that's going to be a critical field goal. And you looked at the chess match that was being played between Lev Holly and Kenny King, two wonderful coaches. I want to tip my cap to the Daphne Trojans football program for a moment. Four players from the 2010 championship team are on 2017 NFL rosters. That's right. There are some high schools across the country who don't have any NFL players at all. And here it is, the Daphne Trojans have four in one championship team on right. NFL active rosters. That's right. Let's take a look at the 7A region standings. We have a break right here. And this one is almost just as complicated as 6A, Corey. Fairhope, with the win last night, pretty much locks themselves up with a playoff berth. McGill taking on Baker tonight. Davidson will be hosting Jackson, or is Davidson on the road playing Jackson? Davidson is on the road playing Elmer. at Jackson. That's right. They played it last, last year. Theodore gets the big win last night, keep their playoff hopes alive. Murphy takes that loss last night, puts them in an odd spot, and here are some of the things that are going on. As you can see, Murphy has one region game remaining next week against Davidson. As I said earlier, Fairhope has clinched their playoff berth, and look at McGill with three games remaining. Keep your eyes on Foley and Theodore. It may come down to that matchup in the last week, week 11, to determine that fourth spot possibly, Corey. Next week, Davidson plays Murphy. And possibly that could have some implications because Davidson still has to go to Bryant in week 11. But as you look at it right now, 
it could come down to Theodore and Foley possibly for that fourth spot if Davidson wins against Murphy next week in Bryant. You have 11 weeks to play 10 games, and some teams decide to go with the bye week. Right. So with that being said, McGill Tulin's dominating Baker at this point in time, 38-6. to six. So we know that sets up a showdown between McGill and wow. Fairhope for one and two seats. Our producer, Quentin Howard, says 41-6 to six right now. And on the move, Trey John Pugh for Blunt gets it up to the 35-yard line. Maybe one of the biggest runs they've had tonight. Earlier, Jacoby Davis had a run, Corey, and I believe that was the largest, longest run they had, but this eclipsed that. And that's what you want to see from your running back. He has the pigskin secured close to his body and is able to move those sticks for the Blunt Leopards. You were hoping to see that type of offensive productivity earlier, but again, they have explosive playmakers and they can score quickly. And out the pew once again around the edge, trying to get a couple yards and forced out of bounds by Daphne almost to the track over there. Wow. And I thought it would have been a late hit out of bounds because as soon as he crossed the white chalk area, the whistle was blown and they continued to push him out of bounds. We take the replay, great camera shot as he's pushed out of bounds right about there. And then you see him just continue to shove him. That's a late hit right there in my eyes, Al. Let's talk about that. We were talking earlier before the game about officials and officiating and some of the controversial calls going on. We know Blunt had one or two in that game against Spanish Fourth the other week there, Corey. The officials do a wonderful job. I mean, they, they're out there for the love and the passion of the game. And with that being said, as a whole, you look at all these officials each and every Thursday and Friday night, they are humans. We have the benefit of replay. When it happens bang, bang, live, sometimes you have that different angle. Yeah. And that's why you have help. There's multiple officials on the field that if you miss something, maybe another one's able to help you out. But as a whole, the officials normally do a great job. Right, we want to tip our hat to them. LeBaron Jones with that reception picks up a first down. Blunt on the move, trying to find Uncle Mo. Can they pick him up at the bus station and bring him here to Harris Terry Stadium? Jacoby Not like that, Jacoby Davis sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And another big sack by the Daphne Trojans. You look at Jack Cushman stopping the quarterback for the Blunt Leopards and Jacoby Davis just did not have an opportunity to really let that play develop because the pressure that was there by the Daphne defense, Andrew Gilbert was in his face first that led to the sack by Mr. Cushman. So Davis has to eat that one right there, second and long for the Leopards. As we approach two minutes remaining in the third quarter, don't move. We'll have hitting the numbers coming up between the quarters. Find out what the number's going to be tonight. Davis escapes, steps into the pocket, and connects. Does connect that ball out to Kyle Cass. He's close to the first down marker, seeing where they'll spot it, spot it right in front of us here at the 45-yard line. It's going to be close, Corey. I believe they'll probably give it to him. Well, what's going to be important is that this Blunt offense continues to move the chains because it keeps the defense of the Blunt Leopards off the field, and they've been on the field for quite a long time here in the third quarter. Yeah, they need a rest. You're right about that. Daphne has scored a touchdown on the field goal here in the second quarter. Davis gets that one out to the receiver. He fumbles it. Did he make a football move, yes, Corey? Did. That is going to be Did he make a, a football move? And we're waiting for the official sign. I saw the beanbag come out. I saw it too. Out. And that's, that's. Looks like it's going to be Trojan football. That's a turnover. Let's look wow. at the replay. And again, we have the benefit of the replay. He catches the football and clearly has possession of football, just slips yeah. and falls. Now, whether his knee was down, that's going to be something that's right. up for discussion as the referees are huddling together now to make that decision. That's the right call. We hear it all the time. Third down, ball down right there. And I'm going to say that's a good call. It was a great call because wow. I thought his knee was down on the play as we take another Look at it. The truck does a great job of showing us and zooming in. Right that there. right knee was down, and then the ball pops out. So a great call by the officials. We just finished saying that they are human and everything happens bang, bang. But without the benefit of replay, the right. officials huddled together and made the great correct sure call. Did. We hear that a lot of times when watching these college and foot, uh, pro games. Did he make a football move? He made it. He spun. But we know. When your knee goes down and your body touches in high school, the ball is dead right there. So it had that bang-bang effect, as you said, but I really like that the officials huddled up and got the right call. Corey. And that's what's important because they don't have that benefit yet 
of replay. With there being a flag on the play, it'll be interesting to see now, 124 remaining, how this Blunt Leopard offense responds to the positive things that have gone on so far. Well, Daphne didn't respond well. Joey Pilgrim said that was unsportsmanlike conduct against the Trojans, so someone may be upset with that call. They just gave up 15 yards to Blunt, and I think Uncle Mo may have just got on the back seat, Corey. Well, that's what the Blunt Leopards need. We saw the Trojans able to score before the second quarter. We would like to see the Leopard score right here before the third quarter ends. And if that's done, folks, we've got a two-score game. That's right. First down ball at about the 26-yard line of Daphne. Blunt trying to keep this drive going, keep the momentum, and get some points on the board here. Joey Pilgrim and the crew discussing some things. Notice across the field there, Coach Kenny King coming out to take a little listen. And they admonish him back to the sideline, Corey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They want him to stay in his coaching box. It's one of those situations. Coach, we'll come explain the call to you once we've gone ahead and coordinated and talked to one another. That's a great shot of our crew <laughs> having Kenny King in deep thought as the officials go over to discuss with them what occurred. All right, it's first down for Blunt. We've already received the call from Joey Pilgrim. Trey John Pugh lined up in the backfield in the pistol formation with Jacoby Davis. Trips at the top. At the bottom here, LeBaron Jones. Hand off to Pugh. And he is drugged down. Looks like Maurice McBride on the tackle there, right about the 25-yard line. McBride's name has been called a lot tonight, and he was just able to gobble up and swallow up Mr. Trey John Pugh, as soon as he turned up, tried to get up the line of scrimmage, did not horse collar him on that play, grabbed him right by the shoulder pads, the outside of the shoulder pads, and that's a huge tackle. Less than one minute remaining here in the third quarter. Blunt will have to get a playoff. Play clock at about 15 seconds. As the numbers tick down on the clock, we'll talk about hitting the numbers coming up between the quarters. Jacoby Davis back steps into the pocket, ball tipped. That is incomplete. That will stop the clock at 31.6 seconds. And we've seen about four tip balls we have. tonight, and that's something that you normally don't see in a high school game. The trajectory of the football is a little bit low from the release points of both of these quarterbacks. Right. But that's a great defensive job by the linemen, getting their huge and big balls up, making those deflections occur. Quite surprising. Jacoby Davis, 6'3", and the tallest lineman for Daphne is Andrew Gilbert, is 6'3", and he plays defensive end. A lot of those balls, you said, being pawed down and batted down across the middle there. Third down for Blunt. Davis tries to connect with Jones, and he wanted a flag. That does not come out. That's incomplete. That takes Blunt to fourth down decision time here for Coach Lev Holly. One of those situations to where I, I love the quarterback and his wide receiver coming over to the sidelines, hugging each other, saying, hey, it's just a miscommunication. You're not at fault. I'm open. I'm just letting you know I'm open. And it shows the love that the teammates have for one another when you don't point fingers at each other, right. and it's we over me. Ten seconds remaining on the play clock. Blunt going for it. Ball on the 25-yard line of Daphne. Davis said he does have a man, and he connects with Collins Woods the third, but Corey, that is short of the first down marker. Penalty marker on the far side of the field near the Daphne sideline. And the only thing that I could see over there is be some kind of holding or pass interference call. Right. And I'm not sure if Collins Woods the third pushed off to receive that football, but the flag is located right in front of the Trojans bench. It's like Woods ran like a little curl route, but he didn't run enough to the first down marker. He was short by about two yards, so. Wow. So an eligible receiver downfield for Blunt, but it's negated. Well, downfield by the offense. Penalties declined. First down, Daphne. Great job, referee Joey Pilgrim explaining it right there. So in essence, Daphne. First and 10, ball on the own 19-yard line, Corey, with 19.9 seconds remaining in the quarter. Big turnover on downs, big stop by the Trojans after the Blunt Leopards had sustained their longest drive of the night. I don't know if that's the original 
penalty marker down on the field, but once again, Coach Kenny King having a discussion or trying to listen in to the discussion of the officials. And no matter what happens, I, I, I didn't see Collins Woods the third run that route, like you mentioned, beyond the sticks. Right. So even if he came away with the catch, they would still be short. short of the first down marker. So it, it, he wasn't enough. He didn't run down far enough on the route. So even if there wasn't a penalty on the play, the ball would still be over on down. But maybe Coach Kenny King is discussing things from that previous unsportsmanlike conduct. He's going to get his ear full or his 10 cents while he can, Corey. Daphne up 24 to 3 over Blunt. And the Blunt faithful pretty much in shock over here at Harris Terry Stadium. And you look at what the Trojans gave up one year ago defensively. 13.7 points per game is what they gave up last year. Come into tonight's contest, only giving up 12 points a game. Yeah. Blunt's only been able to score three. And we mentioned that Kenny King was able to reel off nine consecutive wins a year ago. This Trojans team is definitely fighting for a spot in the playoffs. Third or fourth seeds right in front of them. They're going to wave it off. So they're waving the penalty flag off as some of the scores trickle in across the screen there. And by waving the penalty off, it still remains first down and 10 for Daphne ball up there on 19-yard line. The Trojans, 10. Davidson on top of Jackson, 21-6 to six there. Around the edge comes Williams on a little jet sweep. He stays in bound. He's going to take a loss on that play. McGill all over Baker right there, 38-6. I believe our producer said it was 41-6. to six. Actually, Foley all over MGM, 39-7. to seven. So, Foley still staying alive there in the playoff chase court. And right down the road here, a great shootout going on between Viger and St. Paul's. Viger leads St. Paul's 21-20. to 20. Wow. At Pritchard Stadium. Wow. And that's going to wrap it up the end of the third quarter, Corey. We're getting ready to head to the fourth quarter, but before we do that, we got to make sure we hit all the numbers. Get ready. We're hitting the numbers. As we get ready to wrap up week nine of high school football, we have two 6A powerhouses going head-to-head, -head, Daphne and Blunt, two successful football programs with a rich history to back it up. So as the numbers begin to reveal themselves, one stands out more than others. Tonight, we focus in on the number five. By most standards, Daphne is still a young program, fielding their first team back in 1990. So it's no surprise these teams have only had nine meetings, with Blunt winning five of those games. And during this time, Daphne has only had five head coaches in its history, whereas Blunt has had a total of nine head coaches, and five of them have winning records. And speaking of winning, both teams have won on the highest level. Daphne has appeared in the state championship game a total of five times, winning it all in 2001 and 2010. But they don't call Pritchard the city of champions for nothing. In its 60 years of playing football, the Leopards have appeared in seven state title games and brought home a blue map five times. And that's hitting the numbers. And when you talk about hitting the numbers, Al, yeah. somebody who really hit the 90s decade hard was Coach Ben Harris. Coming oh, yeah. away with, like you just mentioned, five state championships in his tenure here at Blonde High School. Going with the three-peat in 96, 97, and 98, it's hard enough to win one blue map, but to win five <laughs> in one decade, very impressive. You're right about that. He's one of the names right here at the stadium, Ben Harris and Albert Terry Stadium. They call it Harris Terry Stadium. Right now, his Leopards are down 24-3, to three, and they need to mount a comeback if they want to get a win tonight. Hand off to Pogue. Up the middle, he goes for a couple yards. Daphne continuing that run assault that they've been doing all night, mixing in the passes at times, but primarily keeping that ball on the ground, taking the third down. And that's one of the things that they want to do is, as far as controlling the clock here, having that 24 to three lead, no need to go ahead and kill a down by passing the football unless you just see something from a coordinator standpoint that Blunt's given up from a defensive back position. And now Chance Newman being the senior quarterback that he is, he is working that game clock and that play clock down as far as he can. He escapes the pressure and gets that one out to Dante Lee. Will he have enough to pick up the first down? We'll see where they mark him at. Newman was running for his life, Corey. 
Yeah, but he's been able to have that safety valve a couple of times tonight at the last moment. That one being completed to Dante Lee, who's wide, lined up at tight end and can play the wide receiver position. Right. But it's going to bring up fourth down and one, coming up a little bit short wow. of the first down yard mark. I'm going to borrow your phrase, fourth down and about the nose of the pigskin, Corey. But Daphne appears as if they're going to punt it. Low snap to Guardo. He does get the punt off. More of a line drive, not one of his best ones tonight. But he gets a nice Daphne roll there. Flips the field and puts the ball at about the 23-yard line. It didn't look pretty, but it's a good result for Daphne. It flips the field, and that's what you can ask for if you're the Daphne Trojans. One of the checklist items that I had at the beginning of the show is they wanted to limit the Leopards' field position. They've done a great job thus far throughout the contest as Blunt's only been able to sustain maybe a couple of long drives tonight but only equating in three points on the scoreboard. You're right. In that previous drive they had, I mentioned maybe Uncle Mo had gotten the back seat, but they may have kicked him out on 65. They might need to go pick him up right now, down 24-3 with 11 minutes remaining in the contest, score. Just need to give these fans something to cheer about, something to get excited about. Right. Give them a little bit of juice and energy on the sidelines. Not the game that I was expecting as I entered Harris Terry Stadium tonight. Jacoby Davis, he's running for his life right now. He can't get to the original line of scrimmage and brought down for a loss. That Daphne defensive line has been stingy tonight, Corey. And I tell you who's put together wow. a good Huddle highlight film tonight is Maurice McBride, the agree. defensive tackle for the Trojans, 6'2", 250 pounds, making several stops right at the Blunt line of scrimmage. Second and 13. So second about 13 as former Blunt head coach Santee Gamble calls it out. The PL announcer talking about those dirty yellow rags. He coached here from Blunt from 81 to 87. Still showing his Blunt pride serving as the PL announcer. Davis takes a snap, steps into the pocket. He's trying to connect. He may have a receiver down there, and ball bounces off of him. All the blunt coaches look for pass interference, try to connect with Kyle Cass. Late, late flag comes in there, Corey. <laughs> and we talked about the communication, the helping of one another with the officials, right. and that's exactly what happened on that play. You had no doubt that Christian Williams was interfering with the wide receiver by grabbing his shoulder pads. And you take a look at the replay, as Jacoby Davis goes and drops back, steps up in the pocket, and just tries to throw the pigskin over Christian Williams, is able to do so, but he thought he had a clean stop on the play. Right. There's going to be the flag that is thrown, and we're going to wait for them to mark off the appropriate yards. Williams got his head turned around, but he also ran into the receiver, so apparently that may not have helped him out. The officials are discussing it. Maybe they're picking it up, Corey. We don't see any movement, so let's see here. Referee Joey Pilgrim hasn't made a signification as of yet. Here he comes. Against the defense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Be second down. So they do call the penalty as holding. He signifies second down. So the way the chains are lined up, we'll call it about second and three, Corey, for the Leopards. Split backs. Quick handoff. And up the middle on the run, Jamarcus Poe Malden. And he scoots all the way to about the 43-yard line, maybe 44. And that's a new formation that the Blunt Leopards have not shown the you're Trojans right. tonight with the split back call. And you're able to hand the ball off with the back already in motion, gaining positive yards and moving the sticks. Running behind that big offensive line, averaging 300 pounds across the front. Trey John Pugh with the carry. Pugh. Gets right past the 45-yard line right in front of us, maybe about at the 46. So they don't take Blunt to second down. But most importantly, Corey, Corey, they've got to get going now. The clock continues to run. Yeah, it's an ally of the Trojans. It's an enemy 
of the Blunt Leopards, and they're going to have to get something going. But you don't want to throw the ball and kill the clock to where you're giving the Trojans a turnover on downs or having to punt the ball. But I think everything is four down territory from here on out for the Leopards. Ball complete to Collins Woods, the third, across the midfield stripe and across the first down stripe as well. So he picks up the first down. Great shot there from around our camera, folks. Someone checking out some NBA action, cool. It wow. is that time of year. The oh, yeah. NBA did tip off earlier this week. So first down for Blunt. And the chains do move, so ball's at the 46-yard line of Daphne. And it's almost like they're kind of doing a little prevent here. Just let Blunt do their little thing, but don't give up the big one. Yeah, if you think and dunk your way down the field, the chains move and stop on the first down, but you really need to go beyond 20 yards if you're the Leopards. And they're trying to go up there, and the flag does come out. We may oh, have Williams play. called with a hold against Collins Wood there on the near side, near us. So that call going against Daphne appeared as if Blunt heard exactly what you said, Corey. We've got to go vertical here at some point. Yeah, you look at the replay and you look at quarterback Jacoby Davis wanting to go to his favorite target, and that's a big target that he was trying to hook up with. Colin Woods, the third, we talked about him verbally being committed Holding. to losing out of the defense. Ten-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. So if that one is attributed to Williams, that's the second penalty against him on this drive. Yeah, Collins Woods comes in with 20 receptions for over almost 500 yards and has four touchdowns. And if he's able to score this touchdown, he'll be able to give his dad, the principal, Mr. Woods, a high five in the end zone down there as he's talking to FCA representative Al Ernest. Little screen pass there to Pew, and that goes nowhere. The Trojans all over it, Corey, and that clock continuing to run. Yeah, and that's the bad thing. Again, if you're the blunt leopard, you must quickly regroup, get to the line of scrimmage, get your next play in as offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson. After that completion, he's already thinking about what do I need to call on third down and quickly trying to get the leopards to line up. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely four down territory right here every time for blunt. Down 24 to three as we approach eight minutes remaining here in the contest. Al Whedon, Coral the Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. A 6A Region 1 battle with Daphne and Blunt. Jacoby Davis Black back connects with Trey John Pugh. He needs to get out of bounds. He does. He's short of the first down marker, but it's third down now for Blunt. Looks like it's going to bring up third down and about five yards to go, maybe. I'll go with that. Uh, with that being said, the great part is he was able to get out of bounds to stop the clock, allows offensive coordinator a fresh 25-second play clock to get the Leopards lined up. Eight minutes exactly remaining in the contest here. We did have an overtime game earlier this year with Williamson and Viger, but for that to occur tonight, we'll definitely need to have some scoring from Blunt. That pass incomplete intended for Jones. Fourth down for Blunt. Of course they'll be going for this. Yeah, we mentioned they're going to be in four-down territory. 7.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Al. Big play Blunt right here. Leopards so far the biggest play of the night for Lev Holly and his team. Got the stack receivers on the near side here. One man at the top. And Davis does connect that with Kyle Cass. He kind of went up there and sat in the flat the behind the Jones. linebacker, picks up the first the down inside the red zone, Corey. And Kyle Cass is not a hard gentleman to miss. 6'3", 200-pound senior, yeah, like you I'm mentioned, out of over. that double stack at the bottom of the screen and were able to complete it. Now with that completion and the clock winding, 7.45 remaining. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for a shot in the end zone right here. Jacoby Davis, and that's where he's going and connects incomplete, almost had it there, trying to hook up with LeBaron Jones. And he put it on the money wow. in between the two blunt defenders. I don't know if we're able to take a look at that replay or I not. I thought that but was six for it, sure, It Corey. really looked like it was going to be six, and he cranks it up, Jacoby Davis in that great winding position, in and out 
of the hands right there. The ball goes knocked away at the last moment by the Trojan defender. Great defense right there by Khalil Johnson to knock that ball out. That was six points, Corey. Well, they went to the corner of the end zone here. You have four down territory as evident as the Leopards are in the red zone area. Jawan Miles lined up against LeBaron Jones at the top. And Blunt hands it off, go with the running play there. At the 19 yard line. Number 26 on the carry, Tayshawn Petaway. First time we really called his name on offense tonight. Andrew Gilbert from his defensive end position closes down and makes the tackle as he does not allow the Lepers to set the edge. He does a good job of making sure he stays home and has great pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Approaching seven minutes remaining in the contest, third down and about nine for Blunt here. Corey, I don't see much life in the Leopards here. I don't see a, a sense of urgency. I don't see, well, let's get it going, let's get it going. It's just kind of like they're going through the motions here. Wow. Pass intended for Jones, incomplete. Takes Blunt to fourth down. And again, going down to fourth down and almost 10 yards to go, you have to have a completion. Now that particular play they just ran, which was one-on-one -on -one ISO at the top, right. was wide open. It was. You put that ball on the money, and that's a first down and completed ball, and you're looking at first and goal. So it'll be interesting to see if offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson decides to go back to that same play or go to the double stack at the bottom of the screen with Collins Woods. Paul Malden goes to the top of the screen, and we appear to have a timeout here called by head coach Lev Holly. He's used his second timeout of the second half. Well, we got a chance right now. Let's look at the remaining schedule for the Daphne Trojans. Right now, they're sitting solid in second place. They have Robertsdale and Baldwin County at home. We know Robertsdale has not won a game this season, and Baldwin County somewhat kind of still in the hunt, Corey. They so, are in the hunt, Al. Yeah, so they, they, they're not out of it. So. No, they beat BC Rain tonight, or are beating BC Rain 35-14. Right. And you also look at Spanish Fort defeating Sarah Land 34-7. Those are some interesting games, and Williamson jumping back quickly to uh, 5A, Williamson's over Centronel 20-3. Wow. So as we look at Daphne right here, this, this game tonight, if they can pick up the win, it pretty much gives them basically some breathing room with you saying Spanish Fork getting that win tonight over Sarah Lynn. If Daphne can get the win tonight, continues to secure their solid second place in 6A Region 1, taking on Roberts. And that, that's a great situation right there. Your last two games are at home in Jubilee Stadium. Anytime you're at home, you, you have the crowd behind. You don't have to travel. Right. The friendly confines of Jubilee Stadium. So biggest play of the game coming up here for the Blunt Leopards. Fourth and long here. Pretty much this is it for the Leopards. Jacoby Davis needs to connect, and he does with Trey John Pugh. That is a touchdown, 18-yard touchdown to Trey John Pugh. Leopards on the board. Corey, I can't believe it. It's their first touchdown of the night at 639 remaining in the contest. Look at the replay. Wow. You look at Pugh coming out of the backfield, yep. running the wheel route, and he had a slower linebacker on him. And anytime you have the burst that he has, Nathan Getch did not have a chance no. to catch Pugh on that wheel route out of the backfield. Wonderfully called play, great timeout, works out for the Leopards. Now only down two possessions. Kentrell Dorch on for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. So Blunt now down by 14, 24 to 10, 639 remaining in the contest. Look at the cheerleaders right there to get something to cheer about finally. Let's look at the Blunt Leopards remaining schedule. And it's not too much, Core. They're at Gulf Shores next week, and they're done. Coach then, Lev Holly, second year in a row, his bye week is the last week. And that's a smart bye week because it gives you an opportunity to rest and prepare going into the playoffs. You've, you've had a long season where you've gone almost 10 consecutive weeks right. without having that time off. So you get a chance to see your next upcoming first round opponent and also heal up those wounds and injuries that have been lingering. Let's look at the stretch right there from September to middle of October at McGill lost at Spanish Fork lost we know that was a big game they had to come behind and almost win it and at LaFleur so three games on the road home tonight back on the road again Corey 
I wonder if one would say they were looking ahead of the schedule before coming in tonight, Corey. And, and I think that they know Gulf Shores next week is another region game. They took this Daphne sure Trojan did. team down to the wire. Sure did. So you don't really want to get caught looking ahead or looking at the records. You have to take one game at a time, one week at a time. This onside kick that is being set up now by the Blunt Leopards, we know the new rule has been implemented, implemented where you cannot get the ball and drive it directly into the ground That's right. for safety purposes. So it's going to be a specialist at work. So Kenneth Williams kicking the ball here. And Christian Williams, I saw him calling for the fair catch, and he downs that ball right about the 38-yard line. Talking about Blunt and their record, Corey, the last time Blunt lost four regular season games was back in 2012. That was the first year for head coach Mark Hurt. The Leopards finished the regular season at 6-4 and four and lost in the first round of the playoffs to guess who? Daphne. And with that being said, this has become a great robbery. You missed in hitting the numbers, mentioned in hitting the numbers. Right. That Daphne all time against Blunt, I do believe, is four and five. Four and five. So if they're able to come away with this victory, they would even that up to 500. That's right. 638 remain in the contest. Daphne, great field position, not at the 48, at the 38 yard line. Chance Newman. Does he get the timeout? I believe he does. Play clock was running down there. So Daphne does get the timeout. Don't take the penalty, but the five yards. Right now we got a break. Let's take a look at the Alabama High School Athletic Association 5A poll brought to you by the Alabama Sports Writers Association. Right there, number two, St. Paul's in second place in 5A. <clears throat> down at the bottom, Jackson picking up six first place votes, Corey. And Viger picked up three there. As you look at the 5A poll, switching over to the 6A poll, you talked about Spanish for getting that victory over Sarah Land tonight. They've been in the number five slot, Corey, for about three or four weeks now as we put this poll up every week. Sarah Land picking up a couple votes, but we know they took the loss to Spanish for tonight. Blunt right there, and Daphne as well. I wonder if Daphne will get some votes. And let's move to 7A right quick. McGill, Tulin. They've been sitting at number five for a while. Davidson playing Jackson tonight. Theodore got the win last night over Bryant. Their playoff chance is still alive. Jay Pogue on the move into Leopards territory right at about the 44-yard line. Nice run there, Corey. Nice run. Uh, and that was a great pickup to move the sticks because now you're able to probably move with that fresh set of downs, the clock under five minutes. If you continue to use all four downs and don't pick up another first down, 620 and counting for the Blunt Leopards in order to get this stop. Yeah, it'll go pretty quick. First and 10 for Daphne. All back to Pogue again. And he's just bruising the Leopards as he runs across the line. Final right there, Davidson over Jackson, 28 to six. So Davidson goes up to Legion Field, gets the victory of McGill all over Baker. That's a final, 48 to six. That's six losses in a row for Baker, Corey. That, ouch, that hurts. And that team had seven home games on their schedule. Unbelievable. You'd think it would be favorable, but yeah. Coach Smith does a wonderful job at Baker High School trying to get those guys. They've been bitten by the bug injury a little bit this year. Started off 2-0, and just haven't been able to put those wins together that they would like, but I guarantee this Baker Hornet team will be able to bounce back with Coach Smith running the show. Hogue once again on the run. Corey, just look at him. The way he's running it is like a men among boys tonight there. He's just taking over the ball game. He's getting stronger as this game is going along. Right. And that's what's most impressive because he's a very versatile back. I mean, he had 12 rushes for 101 yards against LaFleur, 17 rushes for 117 yards a week ago with two touchdowns on the season. He comes in just, again, being a Trojan horse. You had running back by committee for the Trojans, Mike Franklin and Jay Poe, and you have not seen Mike Franklin tonight, so it's been the single horse action for the Daphne Trojans. Yeah, Pogue been carrying the load, and also that freshman tonight, Trent Battle, coming on the scene and making a big mark. Up the middle for about three or four, Pogue once again with the carry, as we're under five minutes remaining in the contest. 
And they're continuing to grind that clock down, like I mentioned. Second down and six yards to go now for the Trojans. And with them not even being able to pick up a first down right here, they'll be able to bring the clock right up to the three-minute mark. Right. Chance Newman just working that play clock and game clock, looking over to the sidelines. Less than 10 seconds remaining as he takes each snap here, taking his time. And off the pole, runs into his own blocker, but he decides to bounce off like a pinball, just go into the pile and fall down, Corey. But the thing is, the clock is still running, and there's going to have to be a timeout call by the Blunt Leopards in order to stop the bleeding of this clock mm -hmm. by the Daphne Trojans. Third and about seven right here for Daphne. And I thought we had indication that Blunt was taking a timeout. I don't see any penalty, penalty markers down on the field. And there's a call from Joey Pilgrim. So Coach Lev Holly using a timeout right here to stop the clock. And that's a good timeout. I'll tell you what I love about high school football, though, Al. The Blunt Leopards band over here to our right has done a wonderful job the entire night yeah. of just entertaining the crowd and trying to bring some life to this Leopard squad who's trailing 24-10 tonight. And both bands did a wonderful job with their halftime performance. And so many times the bands get overlooked. But this is just a great opportunity here for the Daphne Trojans to try to salt this game away. They needed to be consistent in all three phases for all four quarters. And you look at my checklist, and they were consistent in the second, third, and fourth quarters right. from a special team standpoint. They had a couple of miscues in the first quarter sure there. Now they also definitely been able to control the clock with the balance offensively. You look at quarterback Chance Newman and the running Newman back, the Jay Polk, having success, and they've been able to limit the Leopards' field position, equating 10 points for Blunt. Yeah, as we review a checklist, score, the they pretty much did the things the they need to do. When you talk about those two it's early miscues, only led to a blunt field goal in the first quarter as we were at 7-3, notched up there for a while before halftime. Pogue on the run. I thought I saw a face mask and there, the but the I guess my eyes line. betray me. And he has enough to get the first down because the guys on the chains are moving, Corey. So that timeout did not work to the benefit of Blunt. 4-0-1 remaining here in the contest. And Daphne technically inside the red zone once again. Yeah, and with that being said, it's going to be able to run the clock down to about two minutes without calling a timeout. We mentioned the value of the clock and the value of the possession. The Trojans aren't going to snap the ball until one second left to go on the play clock. Newman hands off to Pogue once again. It's the JQ show. And he runs behind his offensive line. Picks up one or two, taking Daphne to second down. It's second and eight. Gain of two yards on the play. So about two yards picked up by Jay Pogue. Chance Newman looking over to the sidelines to get the call. Inside Blunt red zone. They've been in there a lot tonight, Corey, with this ball control that Trojans have been running. And we look at the Trojans being able to score on their first possession of the contest, then being able to stall. But I don't think the Trojans yet are done on the scoreboard. Hand off the battle on the jet sweep around the edge. Gets close to the end zone, maybe out at about the two or three yard line. We'll see where they mark it. The freshmen definitely having an impact tonight. Trent Battle 6'1", 180. Wow. He already has one score. Well, the problem for the Blunt Leopards is how long defensively they've been on the field. You have to get off the field, and how do you get off the field by your offense sustaining and maintaining first downs? They have not been able to do that, and we talked about it late in the first half, the arm tackles. You know that blunt defense is very tired, and the Trojans are not uh, sitting on this football at all. They want to put the pick skin in the end zone for He's six the more. JP oh, they do. Jay Pugh He's running right up the middle there. No gain on the play. First and goal takes Blunt to second and goal. I recall at Mobile County Media Days, we had a chance to talk with Coach Lev Holly, 
and talked about last year that loss they took to Daphne. They had won back, they won over Spanish Ford, they beat LaFleur, and he said, we just weren't ready when we went to the game, Al. And they had it to they had a force. And tonight, it's almost reminiscent again. They lost last year to to Daphne 28 to 18. Right now, Daphne on top 24 to 10. Whoa. Jay Pogue up the middle, and that's a touchdown extending the lead, Corey. And when you're not able to stop the run, as the Blunt Leopards weren't able to do on that particular drive by the Daphne Trojans, there was no secret who was going to get the football. Right. It was just going to be who for the Blunt Leopards was going to step up in the hole and be able to stop them, get some type of push. The Trojans just wanted to run out the clock, but instead of running up out the clock, they're continuing to light up the scoreboard here at Harris Terry Stadium. Your water on for the extra point. And it is good. Daphne on top 31 to 10. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Daphne all over Blunt right now, 31 to 10. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corey LeBounty down on the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn, as Daphne gets ready to kick this ball off, pretty much a dominating performance by the Daphne Trojans tonight, Corey. And they've been able to control the line of scrimmage and really jump on that Trojan horse without Mike Franklin taking a snap tonight. And he was their leading rusher coming in. But so much, if you don't, if you lose your lose leading rusher and you're still able to dominate the scoreboard the way they are, that speaks volumes of the execution that the Daphne Trojans have had and the advantage that they've had and dominating the line of scrimmage also. As the Daphne Trojan band plays fight on the classic USC Trojan tune there, Gerardo bounces and bounds another one into the end zone for a touchback, putting Blunt at the 20 yard line. Corey, so two minutes remaining here in the contest. You could pretty much say Daphne has wrapped this one up and a lot of wrapping up going on in the area. We're getting word coming in from over at Pritchard Stadium, Viger with the win tonight over St. Paul's. Wow, that's a huge one in 5A. And also up the road, I believe, what was that on Citronelle there? Citronelle is going to go ahead and lose this game to Williamson at Ladd Stadium. Yeah, that dirty yellow ring. Incomplete pass right there. But we do have a flag on the play. Ball intended for Pole Malden. Wow, Coach, while wow, referee Joey Pilgrim is talking this one out. Pass interference. So it is pass interference against Daphne. Let's take it down to the truck. Look at our folks in the truck, Corey, doing all the hard work there, getting the pictures and the sound and the audio. Wave to us, guys. I know you're in. I know you see us. <laughs> There's Miss Diane and Wade and the whole crew and Stewart and everyone. Oh, the guy with the fishing hat, our executive producer, Quentin Howard, he tells us all the nice secrets in our ears, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but that game not up the road, Sister Nell, and Ladd, so Williamson gets that victory. So that's huge right there because I believe we may be taking it up the road next week to Citronelle, Corey. And Jackson lost to Davis, and that's a non-region contest. Right. Trey John Pugh with the run. Trojans giving him all the space he can have as long as he stays in bound, Corey. And that's the biggest thing because Blunt is unable to stop the clock nope. besides getting the first down. And like you said, the Trojans are making sure they don't get beat deep to give Blunt an opportunity to even try the onside kick. Less than two minutes remaining here in the contest. Harris Terry Stadium kind of clearing out right now. Jacoby Davis with the quick toss over to LeBaron Jones. And the Trojans waiting to tackle him inbounds. We do see a flag come in, so that will stop the clock momentarily. Well, you look at Blunt's situation, what they had to do well on my checklist to win this game. 
They had to stop the Trojan horses, plural, to win. <laughs> Tonight, they didn't stop the Trojan horse. No. That no. being number six, Jay Polk. And also, they didn't need to beat themselves with that old dirty yellow rag on the field. We've seen that laundry on the field several times, as evident in this call right here. Body offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So block of the back against first Blunt, that will take them back. You're right about that, Corey. And Coach Holly really wanted his Leopard team to match the intensity of the Trojans. And so far, we saw it being 7-3 to three at one time. But Blunt, until this last score, really wasn't able to match the intensity, especially at the line of scrimmage. Tayshawn Petaway with the run up the middle there. Cameron Williams. He moved the ball up to As we approach one minute remaining in the contest. Making it second and eight. So Leopard still on the field, not giving it up. 31 to 10. Daphne all over Blunt tonight. Approaching our last few plays here of the contest. Davis ready for the snap. Hands off to Pettaway once again. Up the middle he goes. Picks up a couple of yards. That could be the last three of the game. And we'll see if they'll mark this ready to play for one last play. Game clock under 25 seconds right now. So the Trojans getting excited over there, Corey. Blunt doesn't even have to snap it. as Daphne is going to get this big 6A Region 1 win. Huge win for them, 31-10 to 10 over Blunt. So they're sitting solid in second place in Class A Region 1, Corey. Yeah, with that being said, you know, you're going to wait until the end of the regular season to kind of figure out this log jam that's occurring across the different regions <laughs> throughout coastal Alabama. With that being said, you have to tip your cap to Kenny King and his Trojan team. Tonight. Oh, yeah. Coming on the road, they beat Blunt a year ago, 28 to 18, and now have been able to come away a second consecutive win against the Blunt Leopards. Kenny King all time now is 2 and 0 versus the Blunt Leopards' as head coach. Right. Also, it moves the Trojans' record to 5 and 5 versus the Blunt Leopards all time. So a great region win for Kenny King and the guys. Unfortunately for Lev Holly, they'll be traveling to Gulf Shores right. trying to regroup, and we mentioned. The Gulf Shores Dolphins took this Trojans team down right. to the wire, so don't take anything for granted. But I know if anybody can get the Leopards back on track, it'll be Lev Holly and his coaching staff. You're sure, you're sure right about that, Corey. It was fourth down with seconds remaining as Chance Newman got that 10-yard touchdown to get the win against Gulf Shores last week. So I'm pretty sure Coach Holly not taking the Dolphins for granted at all. In the 11th week of the season, Blunt is off. So next week, their season comes down to that, and the Leopards might need a little help to get into the playoffs, score. Yeah, it's a region game, so that's what's very important. With Baldwin County defeating B.C. Rain tonight, with that being said, now you have to look and see. Blunt was able to beat Baldwin County head-to-head, -head, right. but there's also been several other scenarios that have occurred when Sarah Land defeated Blunt, and some other intricacies within the season has gone on, going to be – up until week 11 to see what happens. Let's take it down to the field. Kimberly Dunn with winning head coach Kenny King. I am here with Coach King. Coach, how do you feel about how your team performed tonight? I feel like they did a great job. Um, they came in, um, like I say, we, we had some penalties in the first half. They came back in the second half and, and fought. And um, uh, it's exciting to see the offense and defense and special teams play pretty good. Um, we haven't seen that all year, so we're excited they did today. Now, what does this 6A Region 1 win mean for you and your team? Um, it's just, you know, it's really the next game. You know, it's, it, was, it was a big win, and everybody's fighting it to get in that playoff. So, um, you know, we keep winning. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in the playoffs and, and hopefully a top seed. So we'll just continue to continue to play and uh, hope we can pull out some wins. Well, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kim, with head coach Kenny King. He's right, Corey. He has Robertsdale and Baldwin County left on the schedule. He's somewhere still controlling his fate there. Yeah, he knows his team controls the own destiny, but one game at a time is right. going to be the mentality that the Trojans are going to take. But congratulations to the Trojans going on the road tonight at a tough place to win 
here in Pritchard. All right, from Harris Terry Stadium, Daphne gets to win 31 to 10 over Blunt for Coralie Bounty and Kimberly Dunn. I'm Al Whedon, thanking you for joining us for tonight's game. Next week, we're headed up Highway 45. It's a big 5A Region 1 contest as Citronelle will host Jackson. Join us next week for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Have a great evening.